go. Start that over. Oh. Hello, everybody. Sorry for the wait. I hope you guys are doing well today. I'm joined by a very special guest today in Raven's Hollow. <laughs> Rage has instantly give us a care package, Lion. <laughs> so no potatoes for you today. So care package is posture check, stretches, and hydrate. Well, it's a good thing I just sat up. Mm, yes, it's a nice stretch. I have my drink. Thank you, Rage. Uh, Lion is here with his tacos as well. Yes. Yes. So, for those who are new and returning, my name is Nozomi, the Welsh Pandragon, with my little jellyfish Ori. And joining me today is the King of the Savannah, Lion. <laughs> yes, that's me. Yes. Um, for some nice vibes and Welsh folklore today. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rage, for the care package. That means a lot. I hope you're doing well today. Best Eggy is down with a cold as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw on Twitter as well, you're like, let's make soup. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I did do that. All the soup. I did actually make soup. Yes. I did send her the picture of the soup. <gasps> what flavor soup was it? A chicken noodle. Mm, tasty. I love soup. It's a, I like vegetable soup. That's nice, too. Well, chicken noodle soup is the classic. It will make you feel better. So. Mm. Yes, indeed. But yes, this is... I'm still getting used to using my new model as well. It's super pretty. No, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> yes. Um, the jellyfish is named Ori after one of my fans. <clears throat> they were like, can, can I be named the jellyfish so I'm yours? I was like, oh, I can't say no to that because it's just so smooth. <laughs> I've got my uh, cans of cream soda, which I got off Elf. <coughs> like, I have tea and water. Tea and water and tacos. <laughs> and tacos. Can't forget the tacos. Mm. I'm not a fan of tacos because they're spicy. Like, if ever we have them at home, like they don't have the spice in at home for me. You can have non-spicy tacos. Mm. I'm the one at the house who doesn't have spice, so like they'll make it separate like a little bit. Hello, Noel. Oh. How are you? Ooh, blue. I mean, you can you can make taco out. meat without the spice, and then the mm. toppings beyond that you can edit as you want. And then if you want the spice, you can add hot sauce. Yeah. And if you don't want the spice, you can add sour cream. Like for for us, it's like um, they'll add like the taco seasoning, like which has all the spicy stuff in it, like after they've portioned mine out. They'll just season can... mine with salt and pepper, which I'm fine with. That makes sense, yeah. You can get a non-spicy taco seasoning. Mm. All good here. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you for the follow, Dark Reload. Santa has deemed you nice on his list. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for the all. <coughs> No, thank you for the follow. No, you you uh, made the naughty list. <laughs> but I'm doing good, uh, No, I hope you're well. Let's combo that. <laughs> That's right, Dark Reload's got the nice one and you got the naughty one. Does that mean you're getting cold this year, No? <laughs> I hope you're doing well, though. It's so nice to see you in my stream. Welcome, welcome to the chaos. <laughs> But yes, uh, I'm joined by uh, the lovely lion today. I mean, that means I'm not safe from chaos. Because <laughs> I, I, I may have dared chat for another hype train today, and I'm like, am I prepared for that? <laughs> I have what I need prepared in case it attempts to start. So if it happens, I will be absolutely enabling that. Yes, in case Inge arrives. <laughs> Or even well, Paolo. It does, Paolo's it does dangerous take too. People. Yeah. It does take three people. Yeah, pa Paolo would be dangerous too when he arrives. <laughs> yes, Paolo reached out to me and wants to get an art piece with me because uh, he's a jellyfish VTuber and he's like, can you look at it? It's a beautiful pen dragon. Hello, hello, Izzy. What's our favorite Izzy lion? <laughs> mm. Yeah, Izzy's come to say hello. Lion's That's joining me, me today. Yeah. 
Izzy's precious bean. As always. <laughs> How you doing, Izzy? I hope you're well, honey. Oops, excuse me. Fizzy drinks are not my friend. <laughs> hello, Jaguar. How are you? I got all the cats coming to say hello today. <laughs> cats. I like cats. Yeah, well, you're the big cat. You're the lion. I am a big cat. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Just getting some art done. Oh, yes, you're working you're using those new notebooks and stuff. I'm awesome. What art you working on, Izzy? How you doing, Jaguar? I hope you're well. <laughs> Jaguar is another big cat. <laughs> I collect all the cats. <laughs> big, yes, but not bigger. No. I found out. Um, on TikTok earlier, before we started streaming, and before I called you, mm -hmm. that there's a trans lion. I was like, what? What? Like, it, it's literally a female lion, but looks and sounds exactly like a male lion, like full mane and everything, like IRL. I was like, what? Interesting. Yeah. Doing good, just getting ready for work. Oh, that sucks. I hope you have a great day at work, though, honey. Gotta get the monies. Be working, Jaguar. <laughs> I hope it's not a tough job and you have a good day. The weather here has gone alternatively, really cold. Mm. Alternatively, I hope it's a tough job that pays really well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, especially around this time of year. I know the Christmas oh, yeah. is like... Oh, you're drawing your Phoenix OC! Yes! When... I, I hope that becomes your like VTuber model when like you want to join us down the, the rabbit hole. But you don't see many of those. <laughs> Which I think's awesome. Yes, Izzy's very good at drawing. And he's going to draw uh, some fan art of my OC at some point, which I'm super happy about. Which I think's cool. I like when people draw things for me. <laughs> Unless you're like a, a scammy GFX artist, then get in the bin, please. Well, they don't actually draw anything. They just tell you they're going to. Hmm. Like, there was one today who was trying to, like, grab a sale out of me and literally um, perused through their Twitter. And there was a post of them, like, saying they were sharing references of the art they do. Somebody commented under it going, yeah, you've literally pinched that from somebody's Kofi because you could see their, like, Kofi on the screenshots. And they were like, it's just a oh, yeah, reference. And I'm like, okay, but if it's your own art, your Twitter would be showing that. Like, you'd be showing off your art to get the sales. And it's like, no. You're just, like, asking. And it's one of those, I even said, I don't, like, commission people who are pushy in my DMs or advertise themselves in my DMs for it because it's most likely all the time a scammer. And then they're mm. like, I'm not a scammer, bro. It's like, don't call me bro. Like, you can use whatever terminologies you want with me, but bro makes me cringe. <laughs> Especially, like, when I don't know the person. It's like, no. You know? It's, it's a bit like, you don't get to call me bro. Whenever I finish my OC, I plan on saving up to commission someone so they can make my PNG. Oh my god, yes, Izzy. Definitely. Well, I can I can already recommend the one who did uh, my model for, you know, my art daughter, Bunny Bay. Definitely recommend her. And she's, she's got a good rate, to be honest. This cost me like $15, but I gave her some more for her hard work. I have so many artists that I could recommend. Oh, definitely. There's so many good artists as well, and there's also Intro as well, uh, whom I'm going to be commissioning a piece from when Twitch pays me, hopefully this month. <laughs> well, that should be fun. Mm. Yeah, I want to get a nice piece of like um of my oc like floating a bit like um hugging her tail and like having a j more jellyfish i need more jellyfish <laughs> jellyfish are always fun mm -hmm. like it was super sweet like when i mentioned i wanted a jellyfish in my piece um bunny was super nice to pop this one in she found a really cute one with a happy expression and you know even nice. compiled all the colors to make it look a little bit luminescent um, and I've added a new jelly redeem as well called Release the Jellies. 
I still like this little jellyfish gif I have. Release the jellies, yeah, that, of that course. I'll pop them on there. They'll cover you a bit, but that's fine. And the hat. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, no, the hat is actually covering the jellyfish. Yeah. That's cute, though. <laughs> These are some cute pieces I found, and I was like, yes, all the jellies. They're like my favorite ones. I think they're very pretty. I was like, you know what? Gotta have some jellyfish in here. <laughs> and they were like, th this artist was like pushing for like, another one was like, oh yeah, you need like a banner, some like emotes for your, for your people. I'm like, yeah, I'm aware of what I need, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was the way they said it. It's like, oh yeah, I have some ideas for your stream. And I'm like, you're not the streamer, bro. Yeah. Like there's there's one thing giving input when it's asked for. There's mm -hmm. another thing saying, "Hey, I think you should do this." Yeah, like so many will like, come into my Twitch Twitter DMs and be like, "Hey, I have an idea for your stream," um, and then try to sell the fact that they're not scamming you. It's like, yeah, for starters, your Twitter page shows none of your artwork, and mm -hmm. the ones that do are literally the generic GFX like logo and banners, and it's like. I could make that myself, like you know? I feel like there's like a, a Pixiv style <laughs> system that makes those, because I yeah. keep seeing so many that look so similar. Mm -hmm. Like you can and then, use a software that literally just makes them, like you I just know. pull a clip out yeah. from somewhere, smack it in the middle, like use a font to make the banner. Like you could make a banner yourself, but like some people, you know, people who do want a good banner will commission credible artists. Yep. You know, because it's, uh, it's a there's, luxury. There's... There's the generic, oh, here's a banner for the sake of having a banner, and then there's the really nice banners that mm. you can get. Mm. Those things are... I still need to get one, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, it, they're on my to-do list. Like, I'm aware of stuff I need, like assets I need to save up for. Like, the important one for me was my PNG first. And then... Yep, so, one's a big one. Like, this person tried to push me to get a live 2D of my model that you see here, because it's got all the right angles and stuff. It's like, I don't want it to be a 2D. Because, A, I don't have the setup to make it proper, like, yeah. move. Because I'm on a laptop. Like, that's not happening anytime soon. And I'm happy just being a PNG VTuber for now. Because I don't... It's an extra thing I have to worry about. Like, the movement and everything. And stuff like that. And it's like, I'm fine for now. You know? And you can get it to work on a laptop. It's just not the best I do. I had a very old 3D model I used to have, uh, which I made in Vroid Studio. Mm -hmm. um, like, I even have some of the earlier artwork of it. Like, people made fan art of it, which I keep on my intermission screen. Um, but... Oh, that's what it that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll see one where actually Nozomi's eyes are actually quite visible, and she has shorter hair. Um, and that was, like, my very, very first model um and some people literally made some really cute pieces for me of her and i kept them on there because that's something that somebody spent a lot of time and effort and love to make me so i'm like that they stay there but i do have an old vtuber like 3d model um but and that was just made with basic stuff like you know of course if i were to go down that route again like she would look how she is pretty much looking now you know fringe covering the eyes like all the bits and bobs but it's one of those it's a lot of effort for the rigging part as well to, and the mm -hmm. tracking movement especially if you're doing stuff um and try to focus on stuff and i'm like at least with a png model it's much easier say if i need to get up as well to go do something like during a break you know things like that as well and especially when you have glasses as well, it's one of the reasons that, you know, I'm kind of thankful my mod my character has, like, her eyes covered. Because that, that helps <laughs> with my uh, whole, like, glasses thing. Because <laughs> when I did have my old model, obviously the eyes were visible. So, like, I'd have to take my glasses off so the softwares can recognize, like, my eye movement. It doesn't like gl when you wear glasses. Which, which can be the frustrating. Eyes can... The eyes can be buggy even with... Mm. proper tracking and no glasses and everything yeah i know when i use the the model that i have which i can't use right now because my chair broke oh no <laughs> that was a 
that was a bit ago. But when I do use it, the eyes are just kind of all over the place. Yeah. Like, you have to be in, like, a certain position. Like, you... and it, if, like, it's off by a little bit, you end up with, like, one eye just not having it or both of them just not behaving. Yep. And if you want to get time... like, proper stuff, like, you have to spend quite a bit, to be honest. Yep. yep. Yeah, half the time my my model ends up just kind of looking apathetic. Mm. It's like, oh, I'm smiling like a child. <laughs> nope, it's apathetic. Or, or like when you try to blink as well, and it's like, no, you just literally look stoned. Like, <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, I used to, I used to sometimes use my 3D model when I did my story times on my Discord. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's, a, it's with the tracking thing and then the mirroring like even though it looks fine when you use the model as soon as you use it on discord it reverses the mirroring so i'd be going left my model's going right and i'm like oh my god yep. i'm yep. like i can't it confuses my brain <clears throat> but i enjoy like how it looks like this was such a lovely like experience to watch this model be made as well like you know <laughs> are you enjoying your tacos sir I may have just knocked over my water. You knocked over your water? Oh, yeah, it's water. Yeah, it's just water. Well, do you need to go clean it up? We're good. I have nah. returned. I had to do laundry. <laughs> oh, good job, Izzy. <laughs> the MVP. Yes. <laughs> I just Rip. Need to make sure it didn't ruin anything important. We're all good. Yeah, just make sure nothing's damaged or anything. You'll be fine. <laughs> you did laundry. Oh, Izzy, that's good. I mean, you can come do my laundry. I hate doing laundry. <laughs> I got yeah, to... I'd say you can do mine, but I still have a couple of days before I need to do that. Uh, like, that's the worst house chore I, I hate doing. I, I like cleaning everything else. I'll even enjoy cleaning my bathroom. I just don't like laundry. <laughs> the problem I find with laundry isn't even doing the laundry. It's folding it. Yeah, and that's it. It's folding it's the it. Only like, it. For me, it's like getting it out of the dryer. Then you got to fold it. Take it getting all the way it out upstairs. the dryer is the easy part. You just kind of... It depends if it gets like all it jumbled, if it gets all jumbled up. Like I like to take it out a piece at a time, fold it, and like put it in the basket. Like so, that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, and, and that that actually solves the uh, the folding part too. I think but it, when it I do, so, it, I, I kind of dump it all into a basket. I might say I might save my week. I might save myself the trouble though. Dump it in the basket, take it upstairs, and then sort it out when I get upstairs because that might just save me a, a yep. little less time. Yep. And then some stuff obviously gets hanged up, and then the others just get folded and put where they need to be done. For me, it's a sock finding. Like, I literally have a bag at home that I call the odd sock bag, because if I can't find your pair in that moment, it goes in the bag. Like, yep. I'll put them all. Every sock that comes out goes in the, the sock bag. bag. Later yeah. You can check the bag later. And if, oh, there's a pair. <laughs> like, I did that, like, I did that, like, Earlier this week, like I just like dumped all the, the the full sock bag out and I sorted through them and I was like, yes, yep. it's a scab. It is like they go in as a pair, and they always come out like without their their pair. And it's yeah, that's, you know that's I, how it works. And you can't really <laughs> bunch them up together to wash them because they don't get washed properly, yeah. or or they get like hidden in one of the oh. other clothes. Are you good? You could like uh, you could take a um. A clothespin. Hmm. Hold them together that way. It would depend though, because like you want yeah. something that's not going to melt or be extremely wooden hot, clothespin. like wooden ones. You want the wooden ones without the metal in them, because like, have you ever yeah, accidentally yeah, touched yeah, yeah. a zipper or a, I or a metal with a stove. button? Oh my god! You, have you got asbestos? I hands? work with a stove. <laughs> I know exactly what it's like touching burning materials. Are, are you used to touching them? Have, Yes. Have you got asbestos hands, as they call I it? I get myself burnt like every other day. <laughs> oh no, no burning! Like I, I, I don't like getting burnt. It's typically like, like really light burns though, because like, uh, I, uh, I typically start to pick it up. Like, oh, that's three hundred degrees. Maybe let's not pick that up. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you were here the other day when when I explained. So you know, you bought me my new hot water bottle. Right. Did I ever tell you what happened to the old one? <laughs> You did not. So, uh, one day, th this is you know the term saying bad things come in threes. <laughs> this was yes. this was that day. So I um I ended up accidentally like 
my hand did a random jerk one time when I was making a cup of tea. I ended up pouring boiling water on my thigh. So that was number one. Then the same day, I burnt my fingers getting something out of the oven. And oh, then boy. on the same day, I filled up my old hot water bottle because, you know, it was another bad back day. So that's one of the reasons yep, I, yep. I used my hot water bottle. Because um, I was telling Circus and uh, Capricorn the other day about my back issues and stuff. Um, and why mm -hmm. the hot water bottle was very beneficial. So I had my old one. And I'd, I'd had this for a while, so I think it was generally just the wear and tear of it. But it was filled up and stuff. I was like, right, we've had a bad day. So I had it, like, you know, wrapped up in its blanket, you know, at the bottom of my back when I'm sat on my sofa doing my, my oh. stuff as I am doing now. You know, minus the streaming, because that would be awkward. Yep. And um, next thing I know, like, I was thankful I wasn't on call with anybody at the time. I was just chilling. I was vibing. You know, I was like, I'll read some like I was reading and just, you know, relaxing because it was just a day. And One next thing I know... Days. There was this sudden pop that happened behind me. Like, I didn't hear it, but you felt oh, it. No. Yeah, Next thing yeah. I know, this hot water spilled through the towel, went all over my lower back and the back of my thigh. So I ended up, Ooh. like, like my butt... It went everywhere, like, to the point where I literally had to, like, rip my headphones off, chuck my laptop down so quick, get up, and, <laughs> yeah, you know... You definitely don't want that getting in the lab's up. Like, it wasn't, it was just all on my legs, like, the searing pain. And I was like, are you kidding yep. me? And I was just like... Oh, you probably don't want to hear the horror story. Another care package of rage. About, um, we have another care package of rage. I cannot rage. sit up right now, thank you. <laughs> you gotta sit up, bro. I am, I am cleaning. Oh, yeah, you're cleaning. I cannot sit up. <laughs> Make sure you do your stretches, though. <laughs> yes, and, I will do that and have in a, a bit. And have a and drink. I will, I will take the hydrate to get the water off of my desk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lion's just cleaning up his, his spillage. But then it, I was I'm like... I'm glad that I had a napkin in my room for some reason. I was like so like just... I couldn't that day. I was like, are you kidding me? Like the frustration. Three, like... I literally had told, I was talking to my friends on Discord after, and I was like, you never guess what happened. And they're like, mm -hmm. you've already been burnt twice today, knows me. And it's like, and then the third time happened, and they were like, it's okay. It's come in threes. You've had three bad things happen to you in a day. You should be fine. Yep. I went, I hope so, because I was just like, I got so good. I was like, that was a good water bottle. Yeah. But I've got a nice new one now that I got off you. It's and the woman who made it as well, she obviously um, sent a little thing. So when we ordered it, um, she has like a little card inside that you can email her right. for a tiny mini version as well. Um, so, oh, that's nice. so like I could literally like have the belt either at the front or the back and have like the, f the tiny one at the at the back end of the belt so like both sides are heated mm. up and that's nice, that's she's nice. super sweet hello scorpy how are you i always, I always love vendors like that honestly she was, <laughs> she was super nice uh, her name's like jesse or jessica she's super pretty like she's Dude, those so are the kind. kinds of people that you go spend money on oh definitely all she asked as well like she sent out the mini one free of charge she was like i only want your address she paid for yep. postage packaging all she asked for was a nice review on Amazon and stuff Those like that. Those are the people that you spend money on. I Those recommended the. the I also recommended around. it to Bestie as well. I recommended the thing to Bestie. How are you doing, Scorpy? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. One of my lovely moderators, Scorpy. He's a little gremlin, but he good. I gotta go to work now. Have a great stream. Later, loves. Bye-bye, Jaguar. Have a lovely day at work. This is an impressive business card that I'm only finding out that it's impressive because it has water on it. <laughs> oh, did you just, like, get it and just, like, put it away after? Yes, that's what I typically do. <laughs> oh, bless. I mean, there's a couple that I'm keeping around because I actually want to go back and buy stuff from him again. Hmm. But, uh gotta hype up Most your businesses. Like, oh, here's, here's this one item that I want to buy. Mm. Oh, now I have a business card. Like, business cards are quite... They're not very common, like, from where I am. Like, sometimes if you get, like... If you <laughs> order a package online, they'll, they'll pop one or inside. Or, more specifically, if you go to a convention... Oh, uh, I... 
Oh. So I was so close to going to the MCM convention many, many years ago now. Um, this is well over 10 years ago. Um, I'm glad that my guard car is double sleeved. Because this was um, the Manchester Comic Convention, the MCM. And right. at the time, I dated a person in Manchester. So I've said this is like 10 plus years ago now. Um, sure, sure. And it was really like dead set on going with my my partner at the time and his friends and stuff because they were like super excited to go. Right. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of like, you know, I don't have a lot of money for cosplay, but like I, I could easily cosplay as like the Cheshire Cat as normal. So I was like super excited, you know, to go. It was going to be, right. you know, it was going to go down a couple of days before and on the weekend we were going to go. Shit you not that same week. That the guy texts me, breaks up with me, um, and the mind you, he bought the tickets beforehand. So oh boy! Ended up, he was like, "No, nah. sold my ticket and just went with his friends." Um, but I, what I found funny was at the time my sister was also dating somebody from Manchester, and she was going to the Comic Con, and I told her what was happening because oh she she knew I was supposed to be going. So I told her pretty much obviously what happened because you know I was pretty upset and bummed. Um, and she was like, "If I see him, I'm gonna deck him." I was like, "Please don't." Yeah. <laughs> but what Aww. she what what she'd done though is like, cause I couldn't go, and I was really looking forward to. It. And she came back um from the convention with um she got me like this pack of four like Mario cupcakes, um Aww. and she got me like this little Lego figurine um of the Matt Smith Doctor Who. I actually gave that little figurine to one of my old college professors because he was obsessed as well with it and they did so much for me in college and it used to sit in his staff room um, on his shelf because he thought it was absolutely like adorable. We used to talk about like Doctor Who and stuff like that a lot and I was like because they'd done so much for me during the time I dealt with my own back issues and other stuff they supported me through. I gave it to him yeah. as a little gift and I brought obviously some snacks for the tutors and they were like you're spoiling us, you know. I was like, honestly, you've done a lot for me than, you know, a lot of people could do. Um, and have helped me, you know, pretty much with my voice acting and my acting, which, you know, helps with, you know, all this. You know, like, with my right, accents right. and things like that. Um, but I still just remember just, like, not being able to go because this douche just couldn't, like, be civil. He was like, "No, no, I'm just gonna break up with her over text." I'm like, "Screw you, bro." Yeah, I was like, "I was, I was not more, <laughs> I was more peeved off the fact that you know, it's not the first time I got dumped. Like, you know, I, you know, it ha sure. it happens. You know, they get what they want, they leave. It's it's normal. Um, sure. And this was back when it's I was, not I was like, good, but, you know. yeah, I was like a teenager and stuff. Still, um, I was yeah. just more annoyed of like. Don't hype me up for an event I'm looking forward to. Don't tell me you've got me a ticket to get me more excited. And then, and then just, like, yeah. break it off. Like, um, it, it's like, at least have the dignity to, like, call me. Like, even if you can't see me face to face, don't do it over text. That's just shady. Texting is sketchy to begin with, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it, it's one of those, like, you know, that's advice for everybody as well. If you're ever going to, you know, break somebody's heart, please don't be a douche over message. At least, yep. you know, call them. You know, give them a reason why. You know, because yep. that, that fucks with people's self-esteem, yo. Yep. <laughs> Boop, and hello. You do not need more self-esteem issues going around. No, no. My self-esteem is still especially pretty bad. Not, <laughs> I was going to say, especially not with our favorite dragon. No, I know. A lot of people think I'm super confident, but no, no. I have my moments, to be honest, so this is still, like, new to me that people come. <laughs> or don't go some- Yes, exactly, Rage. Like, you know, th that happened to a friend of mine, you know, they were super excited to meet um, up with a person who'd asked them on a date and stuff. And it was somebody we actually knew as well, because we all went to college with them. And they just- this friend literally called me in tears back in college because they just- they waited, like- two hours for this person to show up like mind you british weather is coming quite cold you know they and they were going on like a winter date they were gonna go bowling and then they were gonna go get hot chocolate later 
and this person literally just called me crying and because they just didn't show up and it was a case of I just literally I was like on the phone to them I was putting my shoes on got my coat and I was like I'm walking to town I will come and I took them out for hot chocolate and I spent the day with them because I was like not happy about it so like, you don't fucking do that you know and they came and slept over at my house and stuff uh, after I told my mum what happened and they were like it's not a problem as it says not a fucking problem in my house you know and fair news to my mum back then she was like do, do I need to go and uh, you know have some words with people I was like no it's fine now mind you my mother is only like four foot something she's very small <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to someone that I thought was really nice and then they go nah that's shit nah nah don't you don't yeah. ghost my babies no ghost is like a lot of people would like, would like come to me for like comfort like required. even even not just online like I'm the comfort person everybody goes to and this person was just really upset the fact that this person had ghosted them so the fact on the Monday when I saw them in college I publicly yelled at them in front of everybody oh, and I even asked them I said what reason they're like I just didn't feel like you know we had anything going on I didn't really want to go out with them in the end I was like why didn't you communicate this prior you, you had you had that. plenty of time to do that and I it said, hurts more to build up and yeah. wonder what's going on than it does to be told immediately, hey, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, that like, it it's happened a couple times as well to, to myself as well, because again, there was another guy I dated in college that we, we dated for a good like half a year or something. To one point, like we were always together, to one day he just spent the entire day like ignoring me like he'd always wait for me by the gate in the morning um we'd go get breakfast together like everything was just he wasn't there wouldn't answer my messages till like the end of the day then asked to meet up so i went with my friend to go see him because she was riled up and she was like nah i'm not having people ignore you for no reason then turned around and just was like i don't see us working together waited the entire day to break it up so we went down to like by the buses where I'd meet my sister and mind you all of our friends were there and they were like you okay you're crying what's going on told them and they had, a lot of these were like tall ass dudes and they had to be held back from going to hit him <laughs> I was like okay, to be fair to be fair <laughs> hmm. it's probably a good thing that he didn't put that on you so that you had to deal with it all day yeah it was one of those like for me but I was at the point where I'd prefer to be told straight away in the day because I can deal with it and have people around me to support me. Not wait yeah. till they're all going home. And yeah. my only support I, after I, I was can, my sister, you know? I can understand the not having you have to deal with it all day. Mm. He was and too like scared to you say anything. End, that was the thing. The, the not interacting all day is huh. not something i can agree with exactly like <laughs> for me it's like just tell me i'm you know i'd rather somebody like just tell me straight up than have me guessing because that that fucks with you mentally like so much oh. like so a lot of times you know you, you end up second guessing yourself and you know he ended up trying to go out with the, the same friend who was supporting me um and she was also my my co-radio host when we did radio together in college and you know she even flat out told him like no and she was at least like she waited at least half a year um to at least give him the courtesy of like a couple of dates um it was one of those that lasted a month and she was just like but she did it for the wrong reasons she she uh dated him to get back at him for what he'd done to me and i was like as much as i don't agree with your methods and you know ways of revenge and pettiness i thank them for the support because it you know they're like no friends friends come first and it there's was... a whole lot of nah going on there mm. <laughs> it was one of those i was like you do you i said you know i even said if they wanted to go out with the dude i wouldn't have minded you know i can't force somebody to stay in a relationship with me if they don't want to because that's not cool bro but it's it's one of those like they they were just taking all the anger that I should have had for themselves. They were just like they were just like the, the, the angry friend. I was like, okay, you know, if you need to do that, that that's on them. Like I can't control how people think, feel, or act. Sadly, um, but it it's one of those like so 
so many of our friends, because we all shared a mutual friend group, because we were all like performing arts people. He got ghosted by so many like friends that were in this our entire friend circle because they straight up told him what you did was shitty, you know, and she didn't have anybody except her sister as a comfort line because you waited till the end of the day when everybody was going home to end things. Whereas, like, we can't do anything when we're at home. We could have been with her today and you were just a douche about it. It's like, you know, get called out for shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, so, I, I don't like the easy ghosting. answer there. The mm. easy answer there is to just not ghost people. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's a case of we're we're all, you know, people at the same time, you know. And if roles were reversed, they wouldn't like it if somebody did that to them. Yeah. But it's okay for them to do out, it. It turns out, and this might come as a surprise to some people, it turns out that communication is a really good thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, st I'm still learning that. Like, I, I shut off yeah. sometimes, and it's like, no, no, if you're sad, you tell people. <laughs> Yep, you can always come to me and I will mm. absolutely talk about it. But nah, it, it's it's one of those, like, I don't like seeing when, obviously, I've had people come to me say they've been ghosted. Like, especially this friend, they were left out, like, literally in cold British weather for, like, two hours waiting. Like, they, they tried calling, texting, and they, in their head, they had this little hope that, oh, something might have happened. Oh, they'll be here. Oh, they might be running late. You know, uh, when they told me, I was just like, hell no. I put my coat and shoes on and mind you, it's like a 20 minute walk to town. I walked to town in the dark to go and get my friend. And this was about like uh, 7 p.m. at night because they were supposed to meet about 5-ish. Um, and I was like, my mom's like, just let me know that they're okay. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I wasn't worried about my safety like at dark in the dark, even though I'm supposed to be because I'm female, you know? But, like, for wow. me, it's a case of I just walked straight to town. Like, I did not care. I was like, you know, I was on the phone to my friend making sure she's okay. You know, we met up at the supermarket. We went and got some warm drinks and stuff. We bought some snacks. And she came back to, to my house. And, you know, she played games and stayed over. And her mom and them were, were completely fine with it. And they they thanked me for making sure she's okay. I was like, honest to God, like, that, that shit's crappy. You know, nobody deserves that. You know, especially, you know, if it's like they're trying to get out into the dating field, you know, and because of maybe a problem with an ex-partner or something. And just in general, people do not deserve to be treated like that. It's like, you know, it's human de decency, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I will throw down for people I care about. <laughs> I might be a small five foot two pan dragon, but it's a case of no, no. You make you upset my babies and make them cry. I'm coming for your knees. <laughs> like and that that's just not in like the v not just in the VTuber and like online community. Like I've done this in person for people, you know. And it it's... I'm not small, and I'll throw <laughs> down too. Yeah, I'm I'm very very small, <laughs> you know. I'm fluffy, but I'm only short. <laughs> A lot of my tall friends make the joke of, like, I'm just so tiny. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not, so, it's not so bad. But then they find out, what, you're how old? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but you're so small. I'm like, I know. <laughs> All that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's one of those, it's because it's, it's one of those. You've, you've got just a very young baby face, as me and my sister call it, because we're cursed with the baby face. <laughs> <laughs> Baby face is typically a term used for guys who don't have beards. Yeah, it's it's one of those <laughs> things. Like, I think for the past like three to four years, I've been ID'd each time on my birthday. I've gone to buy alcohol. I'm like, and it's from people who know me as well. It's like, you know, I got an ID. I'm like, oh, bro, we've done this like last year. What is going on? <laughs> and I think I've been ID'd exactly once, and it was on my birthday. Oh, it is. It's always. I always find it funny when it's on your birthday. That happened like for the last like three to four years, exactly on my birthday. And I'm and they look at my um, ID and they go, "Oh, happy birthday!" By the way, yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, thank you." I, think uh, was, I was also at the convention that I went to. I got ID'd, hmm. but oh. that was like a check. At the, it was a check at the door, and it was like, "Okay, here's your wristband. Don't take that off. Hmm. Show them this. You can get alcohol." I was like, "Okay." I, 
I do wish, I'll you know, I could, I could, I could, we used to have a convention, obviously, in my town, but due to how popular it's gone, it's moved to about, like, an hour or two drive away from my town now. Yeah, um, I think they moved all it the to, conventions near me are at least an hour away. I think they moved it to Talacra up there, so that's, like, near the Rill area, so it's about one to two hours away uh, by car, um, but it used to be held in our university because it was big enough to hold it. Uh, but then, obviously, it got more popular. Like you know, you'd you'd, you'd know the convention was around because you'd see cosplays in my town. I was like, I'm so happy. Yep, yep. And like, I was like, oh, we well, the year we decided, oh yeah, we'll go to the convention this year. Earlier in the year, they told us, oh, they've moved it. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, because it, yeah, it's no. a lot to travel up there, and then obviously buy tickets, and you don't even know if you're gonna get there, and, and the queues. My God. Yeah, those are going to take a while. Um, last convention I went to, you definitely see a lot of people in cosplays going around. The, there's a, a hotel that was like, if you're going to the event, stay at this hotel. And we got a pretty solid discount on the hotel, too. Yeah. But um, you could see people walking from the hotel to the con. Mm. And it's like, oh, there's a thing going on. But also, you can drive past the center and, oh, there's a thing going on. Yep. Like, just your number of people outside. Like, yeah. I want to get to a point where I'm, like, famous enough as, like, a VTuber and a voice actor to where, like, I get invited and, like, compensated to go to one. It's like, no, we'll pay for your travel, accommodation, yeah. everything, just so people could see me on a panel. Um, You know, for, whether it be for my VTubing panel. stuff or if it's, like, my voice acting stuff. Which I think will be super cool. It would probably end up being for the voice acting. Mm-hmm. Just being honest. Yeah. Um, the, the convention that I went to had a, a panel from some of the voice actors from Genshin. Oh my god. And I've, I've played Genshin. I enjoyed it. None of the characters I, that were had the voice actors that I was particularly interested in. So I didn't really go to the panel. Mm. Um, but I looked at the uh, program for it, and I kind of regret not going to the, the table afterward, because one of the voice actors also voice acted in Hades. Oh my god. And I picked up a Hades poster while I was there, and I should have gotten it signed. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. I can't yeah. wait till somebody goes to me, can I have your autograph? Like, I'm, I, <laughs> I get, I get like super happy about stuff like that. I'm just like... I absolutely that that's like my dream to like uh, voice a really popular character at some point, even not not really popular ones, but for somebody to literally go, oh my god, you're you're this person, you voice this character. I'm like I do, you know. You know, you know, you already voice someone's favorite character. Oh, do I? Mhm. Mm Who do I voice? Nozomi. <laughs> Shut up! God damn. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Well, I mean, you could think of it like the, the so the VTuber talk show that I'm going to be like um, setting up, obviously to launch uh, next year. Um, right. It could be pretty much like a VTuber like panel that that you know, you know, people can meet their favorite VTubers. That's a good way to do it, yeah. yeah, I know. I spoke to Ruin about it. Ruin seems interested. He's like, we're going to have to talk about like schedules and dates and stuff, but like. I got like super like excited. I'm like, oh my god, Mr. Ruin would like to be interested in that. Like that sounds fucking awesome. But like it's it's obviously like getting it like when I start doing my advertisements for it, it's like getting the traction for it. Which I th I think will be good to be honest, mm -hmm. you know. I've got to figure out I have how to seen do better. A couple people. Mm. I've seen a couple people look at uh, making a show would get a lot of traction out of it. There's one person in particular I saw. I know Elysian was once. on one. I can do is that like, yeah. well, uh, there was someone I saw back when I think she was at like 500 followers, hmm. and she made a couple posts about here. I'm gonna make this talk show. She's currently sitting at around 7,000. Jesus Christ. I've had people yep. ask me as well, like, um, am I considering making a podcast at some point? I'm like, I wouldn't know, A, how to set it up um, and do all that stuff well, and what I talk about, really. Realistically, what we're doing now is a form of podcast. Yeah. And if you think about it, 
I, for one, almost never look at the screen because I'm typically working and listening in. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm missing anything. No, like a lot of people as well. I've had a bestie took a nap during like my Fright Fridays and other stuff. <laughs> um, a lot of people like, you know, they just like the voice and stuff. And I'm like, oh, yep. thank you. It's a very yeah. nice one. I, I, it's still something I'm working on. Um, uh, I still remember Eisen pretty much like redeeming the Mr. Pinkerton voice and pretty much outing me. He's like, this is why she's the VA team leader. <laughs> and I was like, I suppose, you know, I do I do my best. I suppose that's what I can say, you know. I, I, can't, I can't claim that I'm better than people and like, because I'm nowhere, in, I'm like super amateur in a lot of stuff, you know, but I try. Like, I, w I want to be up there in, like, you know, the cool numbers, like, Mr. Ruin and other stuff as well. You know, my one of my yeah. goal one of my goals is to be, like, as popular and successful as Iron Mouse. I, I know that's, like, you know, dreaming that's... big. <laughs> that is dreaming big for me. Uh, but I'm close to hitting 200 followers now on Twitter. Uh, well, not Twitter, yeah, Twitch. You're definitely, getting Twitch yeah. you're definitely getting close there. I think with the two today, you're... Within five, actually, I think. Yeah, it's one of those, and I did promise uh, Twitter to drop me a face reveal if they got me over two hundred on on stuff, <laughs> which I think is really cool. Well, I've already seen it. Hello, so. Hikari. How are you feeling, honey? How's your throat? Hikari would have joined us today, but she's got a sore throat, and she's not uh, feeling that's too understandable. good. Mm hmm. If you've stayed hydrated and take some meds, you're doing well, honey. But yeah, it's all good vibe. Did you clean up your water, sir? Oh yes, I've I did that a while ago. That's I meant good. to say that I did the uh, stretch and the posture check. Oh, that's good. I'm still feeling a little sick. I'm laying down, relaxing. That's good. That's good. Make sure you take some meds and stay hydrated as well. You know, you don't want to. You don't want it to get worse. That took me out of commission for like a week when when my throat was ruined. <laughs> I was like, I can't stream, guys. Well, <laughs> part of that was me saying, hey, rest so that you're actually ready to do your big streams. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, you don't get to, you know, unless you're 100%, we're not going. I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you're drinking tea. Yes. <laughs> mm hmm I live off tea. My tea, my tea went cold a while He's ago. Good. <laughs> very good. Mine's like warm. It's not hot, but... Mm. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's crack into some Welsh thingy-bajiggies, because that's what we're here for. Yes. At least. Um, bef you know, and we'll take a tea break later. Cause, that sounds like a know, good idea. Tea breaks are important. <laughs> um, so I think last time I did this before Duolingo, uh, we were talking about, like, uh, the category Fairy Knockers, um, which are, like, um workers little fairy thingies um and we're in the category called the puka um spelt with a w uh to replace the u um because that's quite common in welsh language the letter u is replaced with a w so, like you'll you'll see like bus lanes and stuff they'll have like the english version and then the welsh word for bus is boos so they just take out the U and mm. replace it with the W. Some Welsh words are quite simple. They just replace a couple of the letters. Like we don't have the letter X in our um, alphabet. We ha we use uh, C and S to give us the X like version. So like taxi, you'd spell it with an X. It's spelled T-A-C-S-I here. So taxi. Um, so you get a C and an S sound to make a X sound instead of the X. So. I swear I was saying this all of the other day you did it was like how things are very the languages similar. are practically identical mm -hmm. it's not super hard to learn the difference between the to, to learn something in the same category of language yeah it's it's pretty interesting a lot of people and don't particularly understand welsh i was trying to teach um capricorn mm -hmm. and circus how to say the t uh, the double l sound the other day and it was so funny <laughs> Um, especially as well if you're not used to saying it, they're like, how, how do you make that sound? And I was like, you have to move your tongue a certain way and then make a, like a hissing sound, like a, how a snake it's would like, say um, it, you know? It's like how to speak anything in Danish. 
you have to put a potato in the top of your mouth. Put a potato in the top of your yep. mouth? I've never you, you, heard you, that. Take a, you take a slice of potato, you stick it in the top of your mouth. Hoping I can do and it. And that'll help you speak I'll Danish. Do to do Japanese. Of course, I'm definitely going to bring out the Japanese Duolingo when I cover Japanese folklore as well. Because um, I think that'll be super fun. I want to try and incorporate the Duolingo languages uh, with each of the folklores because I think that'll be super fun. So when I do like Japanese folklore, I'm definitely going to be doing Japanese Duolingo lessons because <laughs> those are fun. I tried learning a bit of Japanese a while back, but like with the three different alphabets, my brain is like, no. <laughs> it's 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 a bit tricky, but we'll get there. Of course, Ikari, any, when I cover my Japanese folklore in the future, you will definitely be a frequent guest. I would love to have you over. Um, and the same goes for everybody. If, you know, everybody's welcome in my streams, to be honest, you know, it's it's a nice vibe. And people like to put their input and thoughts on some of the stories I talk about. And plus we have like Welsh words as well. <laughs> Of course, Hikari, you're always welcome anytime, sweetie. Plus, uh, the day after Christmas, Hikari will be joining me for a stream as she builds her gingerbread house. <laughs> Say the Ooh, long gingerbread Welsh. Gingerbread houses are fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the long Welsh name is Llanvaia Puth Gwyngoth Gogerach Undrobach Llantasilio Gogogoch. <laughs> you always like redeeming that one. <laughs> Only when it's relevant. <laughs> when it is, yes. So on to the puka. Um, <clears throat> so another imaginary being closely allied to the fairy family was the puka. He seems to have possessed many of the mischievous qualities of Shakespeare's Puck, whom also he resembled in name. And it is said that the puka, in common with the brownie, is a, wait is a willing worker. The Reverend Edmund Jones, in his book of apparitions, gives an account of one of these goblins who visited the house of Job John Harry, who lived in a place called Troon, and hence the visitor is called Pukar Troon, and many strange tales are related to this spirit. The writer of the apparitions states that the spirit stayed in Job's house for some time before Christmas until Easter Wednesday. He writes, at first it came knocking at the door, chiefly by night, spirit, uh, which it continued to do for a length of time, by which they were often deceived by opening it. At last it spoke to one who opened the door, upon which they were much terrified, which being known brought many of the neighbours to watch with the family. T.E. foolishly brought a gun with him to shoot the spirit, as he said and sat in the corner. As Job was coming home that night, the spirit met him and told him that there was a man come to his house to shoot him. But, said he, thou shalt see how I will beat him. As soon as Job was come to the house, stones were thrown at the man who the brought the gun, from which he received severe blows. The company tried to defend him from the blows of the stones, which did strike him and no other person, but it was in vain so that he was obliged to go home that night, though it was very late. He had a great way to go. When the spirit spoke, which was not very often, it was mostly out of the oven by the hearth's side. He would sometimes in the night make music with Harry's job fiddle. One time he struck the cupboard with stones, the marks of which were to be seen, if they are still not there. Another time he gave a job a gent he gave Job a gentle stroke upon his toe when he was going to bed, upon which Job said, Thou art curious in smiting, to which the spirit answered, I can smite thee where I please. They were at length gown fearless and bold to speak to it, and its speeches and actions were a recreation of them. Seeing it was a familiar kind of spirit did not hurt them and informed them of some things which they did not know. And one old man, more bold than wise, on hearing the spirit just by him, threatened to stick him with his knife, to which he answered, Thou fool, how can thou stick what thou cannot see with thine eyes? 
the spirit told them that he came from Puch e Gasig, i.e. Mare's Pit, a place so called in the adjacent mountain, and that he knew them all before he came there. On Easter Wednesday, he left the house and took his farewell in these words, Dos in Ayak Job, i.e. farewell job, to which Job said, Where goest thou? He was answered, Where God pleases. Hello, Inge. How are you, honey? <laughs> he is, he's arisen. <coughs> I was going to say he's arrived. He has arrived. I'm hoping he hasn't seen, I, I'm hoping he hasn't seen the stream title either. Well, don't tell him that. <laughs> I'm, I was thinking about building the Lego gingerbread house next week. I'll message you the deets later. Of course, Ikari. Message me away. You know you can. <coughs> So the Puka was credited with maliciously leading benighted men astray. He would appear with a lantern or candle in hand some little distance in front of the traveller and without an exertion keep ahead of him and leading him through rocky and dangerous places would suddenly, with an ironical laugh, blow out the candle and disappear and leave the man to his fate. He wants to see how much Inge's willing to spend to number one again. Oh, Paolo's here too! Oh, they come in threes. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. What are you talking about? They're in threes today. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. I know. I was even telling you uh, Paolo may show up today. <laughs> yep. How are you, Paolo? I hope you're doing well, honey. The following tale, taken from Croker's Fairy Legends of Ireland, Volume 2, pages 231 to 233, well illustrates the mischievous trait in the character of the Puka. The writer has seen the tale elsewhere, but as it differs only slightly from the recorded by Croker, he gives it in the words of the author. His words are as follows. Cum Puka, or the Puka's Valley, uh, forms part of the deep and romantic glen of the Clidach, which, before the establishment of the ironworks of Messer, uh, Frere and Pawel, was one of the most secluded spots in Wales, and therefore well calculated for the haunt of goblins and fairies. But the bustle of a manufactory has now in a great measure scared these beings away, and of late, it is very rarely that any of its former inhabitants, the Pukas, are seen. Such, however, is their attachment to their ancient haunt, that they have not entirely deserted it. As there was lately, living near the valley, a man who used to assert that he had seen one, and had a narrow escape of losing his life, through the maliciousness of the goblin. As he was one night returning home over the mountain from his work, he perceived at some distance before him a light, which seemed to proceed from a candle in a lantern, and upon looking more attentively, he saw what he took to be a human figure carrying it, which he concluded to be one of his neighbours. Oh my goodness! Oh, Limp! Limp has gifted a tier 1 sub to... Jaded Grizzly. Oh, I am the captain now. Thank you, Limp. Thank you very much, sweetie. <laughs> uh, where have we gone? The ghost returning from his work. As he perceived that the figure going the same way with himself, he quickened his pace in order that he might overtake him and have the benefit of his light to descend the steep and rocky path which led into the valley. But he rather wondered that such a short person as appeared to carry the lantern should be able to walk so fast. However, he redoubled his exertions, determined to come up with him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Paolo! Thank you for gifting a sub to Road. Thank you. <laughs> this begun. <laughs> Mm, um, I don't know if the train's gonna start yet. Probably not. We're we're fine. Had some misgivings that he was not going along the, the usual track. Yet he thought that the man with the lantern must know better than himself, and he followed the direction taken by him without further hesitation. Having, by dint of hard walking, overtaken him, 
he suddenly found himself on the brink of one of the tremendous pre precipices of the Kum Puka. Oof, down which another step would have carried him headlong into the roaring torrent beneath. After completing his con consternation, at the very instant he stopped, the little fellow with the lantern made a spring right across the glen to the opposite side, and there, holding up the light above his head, turned round and uttered with all his might a loud and most malicious laugh, upon which he blew out the candle and disappeared down the opposite hill. Second place might as well be last. Oh my god, Limp's got challenging words. What, only a tier one? Are you even a real fan? <laughs> Paolo, yes, Limp is very much a real fan. I assure you. Imagine sweetie. not being tier three. <laughs> I think I think Eisen, my manager, like subbed for like six months at a tier three, I believe. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Is he still doing that? Probably, but at the minute he's dealing okay. with a uh, he's dealing with like um his his grandma and stuff like ah, that, family that, stuff. Like I always make sure true. like his so his he's still studying university um and his health's been on and off and he's doing a lot of stuff for VA stuff. <laughs> Fighting that talk for a sense. number two. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, right. Oh god. Oh. God. Paula. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I was just waiting on in game. Oh my goodness. Oh, Paolo, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, the tense here, Sam. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, Inge is in the in the chat right now, so. <laughs> this should be interesting to see. Oh, thank you. Oh goodness. Yeah. Oh, Hikari made the nice list from Santa. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> oh, I uh, could have told you that. Oh, I know. She's super sweet. Oh, no oh, made the nice list. <laughs> Gotta happen at least once every stream knows of me. Oh, as long as you're not putting <laughs> yourself out of pocket, Paolo. Thank you. Teddy says, thank you, Paolo, and his lovely side of booties. <laughs> How are you doing, Teddy? I hope you're doing well, sweetie. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, oh. Paolo comes once in a blue moon to spread his uh, jellyfish joy. <laughs> I still can't wait to see the, the piece that he wants to commission. It's going to be awesome. Oh, oh, oh. Just remember, yeah, these gift really subs are courtesy of the American Navy. Oh. <laughs> oh god. Well, we're in very good thanks to them. Oh, oh, oh. As long as you guys spend responsibly, like, that is completely fine. <laughs> so, this spirit is also said to have assisted men in their labors, and servant girls and servant men often had their arduous burdens lightened by his willing hands. But he punished those who offended him in a, in a vindictive manner. The puka could hide himself in a jug of balm or in a ball of yarn, and when he left the place, it was forever. In the next chapter, I will treat I will treat of another phase of legendary lore, which, although highly imaginative, seems to int intimate that the people who transmitted these tales had some knowledge, though an exaggerated one, of the people and system which they supplanted. Big words for Nozomi! <clears throat> but yes, um, the, the word um, Kum, so C-W-M-M, -M, is actually Welsh for like valley, though. It, even though I do need to apologise people, it does, it does uh, sound very dirty. Did someone say somebody say big word? Yeah, big words from those of me. <laughs> oh, Paula wants the Welsh name too. Okay. So oh, it's Clan Via Puthguingus Go Gerak Undrobo Clentasilio Go Go Go. Never gets old saying that. You guys like to hear it. <laughs> they just sort of 
stop for a moment and go, what? It sounds nice when you say it. <laughs> Thank you. My grandmother taught it me, um, because even though we're not like completely like fluent in Welsh, because obviously that's our second language, because uh, I was taught in obviously a more prominently English speaking schools. Um, my grandmother was like, you know, she was the same. She's like, I don't speak much well she knows like little bits of it um and again she could read she could read the words if it's presented even though we don't necessarily know what they mean um unless like we do a lot of like learning um but i remember one time um the first time i'd heard it uh, we were going in the car somewhere before we got in the car i asked her i said did, did she know the long welsh place and she did and she told it me and i was like i thought it was like so cool just hearing her say that and i asked her if she would teach it to me and she did like to be honest she's taught me like how to knit as well and things like that so i, d I do need to start doing that again like my knitting and my crochet <laughs> which which is fun i want i want to try and um make another scarf at some point for someone yes scarves are nice like the first thing i i learned to to knit was a scarf like i'm self-taught in crochet i scarves um, are definitely easy to knit as far as oh yeah goes. um knitting definitely i highly recommend it it's like a, a start for people um as well as like you can make patches for like uh your like blankets and stuff so i used to make like blankets and scarves um I can also like crochet like just headbands as well and scrunchies as well. Um, I used to do that for some of my friends' kiddos. I used to make up a bunch of crochet, a bunch of scrunchies for them for their hair. Uh, the girls loved it. They were like, "It's so cool, thank you." And then I'd have I've had other little kids, uh, you know, ask their their parents if they could get one, and I'm like, "Yeah, I don't mind. I don't charge them because they're my, you know, they're my friends." Uh, but some of them like give me stuff for Christmas or as a thank you, so you know, little things. Um, I've made, I think, one Halloween when I started my crochet journey because I'm I'm self-taught with crochet. My grandmother didn't teach me this; she taught me how to knit. And my sister used to get big magazines with a bunch of wool and like crochet hooks included. So like, I had a bunch of crochet hooks, and I was like. I don't know how to crochet so I'm gonna teach myself so I I went on YouTube and I would sat there watching videos and within like about four to seven hours I learned basic crochet and stuff um you know so I just sat there for hours just self-teaching myself with YouTube videos so within like seven hours I'd had all the basics down that I was able to do stuff and Sometimes if I forget a bit, like if I haven't crocheted in a while, I'll just pull up a video and have a look at it again and then it comes back very easily for me. Um, so during my the first time I started doing crochet and I wanted to look into like, I experimented and I made a little plushy owl. Uh, it was very simple to make and you know easy to fill with like your stuff in and then sew it up and whatnot. So I made one and I showed a group of my friends and one of them was like, I demand an army of owls because I want to give them to my cat. And he goes, I will I will commission you to make me 31 owls. Now mind you, this was a challenge to get them all. A lot of this was a challenge to get them done before the end of October. So, you know, I had an entire month to get 31 owls done in October. And he said, you know, uh, I was to let him know how much the postage and packaging was to send it to him. Yeah. Um, I got it done, I think, a week before the end of the month. Um, and he, he literally paid for all the postage, packaging. And, you know, I sent them over. And he even paid me, like, extra for what they're worth. Because I charge for, like, you know, a plushie that size, something very, you know, handheld was like five pound what i'd normally charge for something that size you know and that's cheap compared to most other crochet crafters that you know they 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 know how much their craft is worth for me i understand that you know people don't have a lot of money for stuff so i don't like i always like make sure people spend within their means 
and it's affordable. And he was like, no, nah, I'm going to give you extra for all this and the stuff. And I was like, holy shit, dude, yep. thank you. Like, And he's, have... his cat still has them. And I remember I recycled. Ooh. So my fill-in for those at the time was a bunch of old clothes that had broken or had been like too small. So I used to cut them all up into shreds and had a big bag filled with them. And I would fill up the, the owls and plushies with them. So they're machine washable as well. And it was, you know, his cat still has them. He sometimes sends me pictures of his cat. Like, his cat's grumpy, and sometimes he'll knock them over. But, like, he still has them. And I was like, oh, my God, dude. And that was, like, I think over two years ago now. So I do little things sometimes, like, um, because you can get finger cramps from them. And a lot of people are like, can you teach me how to crochet and knit? And I was like... I could <laughs> but sometimes like it's it's um it's more motor memory than anything muscle memory really um uh, once you learn like you you can like i haven't properly sat down and knitted in a good like five-ish years but i could pick up literally two uh, knitting needles i know how to like cast on i know how to you know add the rows i know how to still knit just easily i'm like it still baffles me that I still know how to do it, even though I've not done it in a long time. <laughs> yeah, one for every day, Paolo. <laughs> I have one thing to say about the owls. Mm -hmm. Look at all those chickens! Oh my god, yes. <laughs> and I actually made a couple of them personalised. There was like eight specific owls in that thing that are one of a kind because... Uh, they were personalized to look like um, there was one that was like a Nozomi owl um, or as like my friends at the time like know my IRL version of me so I did one that was based on me one that was based on the guy who requested it and the other ones were our little small friend group um, and there is an owl that is dressed like a viking in, in that little uh, bunch um, for one of our friends who was, uh, you know, he liked Vikings and stuff. And I crochet, I, I knitted a very tiny pineapple um, that became like a running joke because um, they said, I wonder if you make like a really tiny pineapple for one of our friends, Rob, who he was a living meme for the pineapple on pizza thing. And and they suggested, if I could, try and make a tiny pineapple. And I did. And they lost their shit. They were like, it's a tiny pineapple. And when it arrived, obviously, in the in the States and stuff, he made sure to get a picture and show the tiny pineapple. I was like, it's still going. It still hasn't been damaged. Because that was the smallest thing I made, was that pineapple. And I was like, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> the memes thrive on here. Oh, memes are always a thing. Okay, oh, so Limp got knocked to number two. That's okay. <laughs> as long as you're that able to afford a bit it. Ago. Mm. That's, that's fine, as long as you can afford it. Like, don't put yourself out of pocket, to be honest. <laughs> He's like, I am the captain now. <laughs> that's an ongoing meme. And it's definitely been long enough that uh, even Inge showing up won't trigger the hype train. Yeah, that's okay. To be honest, I'm I'm safe. <laughs> I'm safe. I know he he dropped some support for Tricky well, during his Well, don't say birthday. that yet. <laughs> uh, it still only takes three people. Oh god! And if Inge does it and Paolo does it, I can always hop in and say, "Hey." Mm. It's one of those like people just messaging Inge fucking later on. <laughs> oh bless. <laughs> yeah, so I'm surprised he's not asleep yet. <laughs> It's late for him. He's an hour ahead of me. <laughs> it's like, do, do I dare challenge him? No. <laughs> Tempted to just, like, tag him, but, like, no. <laughs> so this is the Istrad legend. So, in a meadow belonging to Istrad, bounded by the river which falls from Wechlin Lake, they say the fairies used to assemble and dance on fair moonlight nights. One evening, a young man, who was the heir and occupier of this farm, hid himself in the thicket close to the spot where they used to gamble. 
Presently, they appeared, and when in their merry mood, out he bounced from his cover and seized one of them females. The rest of the company dispersed themselves and disappeared in an instant. Disregarding her struggles and screams, he hauled her to his home, where he treated her so very kindly that she became content to live with him as his maidservant. But he could not prevail upon her to tell him her name. Some time after, happening again to see the fairies, up, <laughs> up, oh my god, where did I go? Upon the same spot, he heard one of them saying, The last time we met here, our sister Penelope was snatched away from us by one of the mortals. Rejoiced at knowing the name of his incognita, he returned home, and as she was very beautiful and extremely active, he proposed to marry her, which she would not for a long time consent to. At last, however, she complied, but on a condition that if ever he should strike her with iron, she would leave him and never return to him again. They lived happily for many years together, and he had her he had by her a son and a daughter, and by her industry and prudent management as a housewife, he became one of the richest men in the country. He farmed, besides his own fire freehold, all the lands on the north side of Nantabetus to the top of Snowdon, and all Cumrinog in Llamberis, an extent of about 5,000 acres and upwards. <laughs> Unfortunately, one day Penelope followed her husband into a field to catch a horse, and he, being in a rage at the animal as he ran away from him, threw at him the bridle that was in his hand, which unluckily fell on poor Penelope. She disappeared in an instant and he never saw her afterwards, but heard her voice in the window of his room one night after, requesting him to take care of the children in these words. Prag bod anad a bimab, unrod roek arno gob i dad. Prag bod anwed a lir can roduk arni beist imam. That is, O oh, lest my son should suffer cold, him in his father's coat enfold, lest cold should seize my darling fair, for her her mother's robe prepare. These children and their descendants, they say, were called Pellings, a word corrupted from their mother's name Penelope. William proceeds thus with reference to the descendants of this union. This late Thomas Rowlands, Esquire, of Carai in Anglesey, the father of the late Lady Bulkeley, was the, a descendant of this lady, if it to be true that the name Pellings came from her, and there are still living several opulent and respectable people who are known to have sprung from the Pellings. The best blood in my own veins is this fairies. This tale was chronicled in the last century but it is not known whether every particular incident connected therewith was recorded by Williams. Lassinus, the Reverend Owen Wynne Jones, a clergyman, relates a tale in The Brithon, which he regards as the same tale as that given by Williams, and he said and he said and he says that he heard it scores of times when he was a lad. Glassinus was born in the parish of Rostrevan, Carn Carnarvonshire, in 1827, and as his birthplace is not far distant from the scene of this legend, he might have heard a different version of William's tale, and that too of equal value with William's. Possibly they were not more than from 40 to 50 years between the time when the older writer heard the tale and the time when it was heard by the younger man. An octogenarian, for, or even a younger person, could have conversed with both Williams and Glassinus. Glassinus's tale appears in Professor Rees's Welsh Fairy Tales, Camroda, Volume 4, page 188. It originally appeared in The Brithon for uh, 1863, page 193, and it is as follows. One fine sunny morning, as the young heir of Istrad was busied with his sheep on the side of Moa Elo, he met a very pretty girl, and when he got home he told the folks there of it. A few days afterwards he met her again, and this happened several times. 
when he mentioned it to his father who advised him to seize her when he next met her. The next time he met her he proceeded to do so, but before he could take her away a little fat old man came to them and begged him to give her back to him, to which the youth would not listen. The little man uttered terrible threats but he would not yield, so an agreement was made between them that he was to have her to wife until he touched her skin with iron and great wit was the joy both of the son and his parents in consequence. They lived together for many years, but once on a time, on the evening of Betis Fair, the wife's horse got restive, and somehow, as the husband was attending to the horse, the stirrups touched the skin of her bare leg, and that very night she was taken away from him. She had three or four children, and more than one of their descendants, as Glasinus maintains, were known to him at the time he wrote in 1863. That's cool. Yes, the fairies don't like iron or something. When the kidnapper be kind of cute, though. <laughs> I think that's actually a pretty common theme with. Um, yeah, with fair folk. Certain types of yeah. Yeah, like there's, there's or, always um, like I've, yep. something. Yeah. I've also seen a, a couple media where iron is just anti-magic in general. Yeah. And it's the same like with like say lichens and werewolves like the whole silver thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Which see that barely makes sense, but then you think, oh, magic. Salt as well. Morning, no yep. Well, good evening, Ork. And garlic and vampires. I hope you've slept well. How are you doing, Ork? I hope you're well, honey. <laughs> You're doing well. <laughs> Paolo be king jellyfish at the minute. <laughs> or loud noises in bears. Except that one's real. Really? Yes. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah, if you that. if you're out on a camping trip and you have a bear coming at you, make yourself look big, grab grab some pans and start making noise. Mm, let's not forget jellies to dragons. Big weakness. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that is yes. a weakness but it's not the same kind of weakness most of these are driving away yes i i just want all the jellyfish like i have a new jellyfish in my model called ori he's super precious and uh i added a jellyfish redeem <laughs> and my little mama jelly with her baby jellies the gif <laughs> it's it's a it is a weakness. I do like uh, cute ones. I do like jellyfish. They're all cute. You glare at me, sir. Release the jellies. Of course, of course, darling. You get to see one with a Christmas hat, though. Because <laughs> it covers the Christmas hat. But I have some pretty jellies to show you guys. Aren't they super pretty? <laughs> I actually have... Um, the jellyfish that Paolo uh, is to add to my streams as well um, at some point. Uh, somewhere shown on one of my screens. I'm going to have uh, his jellyfish as well. So, so a bit of piece of Paolo will be present as well. <laughs> that should be fun. Mm. I love all types of uh, jellyfishes though. They're super just pretty and I like looking at them. They are hypnotizing, Paolo, definitely. Hello, Bunny. I'm doing well, sweetie. How are you today? Oh, no, so you can be... oh of course, Paolo. You're very special. You're one of my favorite VTubers and persons. <laughs> Make us blush. Of course, Paolo is best jelly. <laughs> yes. I would have named this lovely jelly in my model Paolo, but like one of my fans di dibbed the name first, so I was like, of course. <laughs> I'll have like many different jellyfish like around. <laughs> but yes, definitely. My weaknesses, I think, are like snacks, compliments, and jellyfish, I guess, and cute things. <laughs> I, like, I like the cute things. That means you like yourself, right? No, I don't like myself. <laughs> you. No, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. I'm glad, Bunny. Bunny's adorable. 
Bunny came to Duolingo uh, stream the other day. It was super awesome. But yeah. I'm glad you're doing okay, Bunny. Of course I'm gonna ask. You don't need to thank me for asking. Your well-being is important to me. <laughs> yeah, I find everything else pretty much cute. Not myself, though. <laughs> you are. No, lies. <laughs> Like, my model's cute, but, you know. <laughs> I don't take... It's one of those... I, I I struggle with people compliment me. It's... it's uh, it's I'm not used to it. I'm like, no. <laughs> Listen to the bear. <laughs> He's talking about He's a lion. What oh, bear? No. <laughs> He's a bear. <laughs> what bear? You're a bear now. I give bear hugs. <laughs> Give bear hugs but I'm not a bear. you're a lion. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, we mean the other kind of bear. Which bear? Uh... Which bear? <laughs> Listen to the bear. He knows what he's talking about. Which bear? <laughs> big hairy gay man. <laughs> the big hairy gay man. Oh. That's also not accurate, so... <laughs> oh, I love bear hugs. I like bear hugs too, Hikari. Be the other kind of bear, the big hairy gay man. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if that's directed at you. <laughs> I have no idea, oh. nor do I especially care. I mean, I mean, you are, you got, you got hair because you know you're lying. I'm big hairy, yes. Yeah, big and hairy. <laughs> that's that's where it stops. Mm. Yes, but it's okay if people are gay, you know. Yeah. I'm the pan dragon, so like. That's fine. You know. I'm not. Believe but... us, we mean it as a compliment. I think they mean it in a good way. Yeah, I. <laughs> oh, unless it's the other definition of gay. Oh yes, the happy term. In which case, yes. Be gay, do crimes. <laughs> Hikari. <laughs> Hikari's advocating for, for, for crimes. <laughs> Hikari's got gremlin energy today. And she now, was on now the I'm nice just list. Thinking, <laughs> now I'm just thinking of this, this big bearded guy going around cracking jokes and having fun while robbing banks. <laughs> You're a, you're a pan wolf. Oh. oh, welcome to the kitchen cupboard. Oh, welcome to the cupboard where all our pans live. Angry Bunny is almost done. So it's... Oh my god, I can't wait to see your little angry bunny. Yeah, Bunny's been adding new expressions to the little bunny picture. About to be arrested on felony tomfoolery charges. <laughs> oh, you guys crack me up. I love it. Oh... Uh, but I need to call a tea break because I forget that a bathroom that exists. <laughs> yes, that is certainly a thing. Plus, we need to make more tea, Lion. We need to make tea. Uh, I still have my, half of my tea left. Is it cold? Not yet. Not yet. It's like Not a yet. little warm. It's a little, a little warm. A little warm. That, that is still a crime. You know what? <laughs> better than cold I've oh yes knows me you should be arrested for being or... too lovely oh my god <laughs> hikari no you made me blush stop it <laughs> I, I mean you know i'm a demi you bun bun police right here i'm gonna have to well... lock you up <laughs> demi bun buns are more than happy and welcome here too <laughs> yes yes she's so sweet stop it you guys no <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Bunny, little Demi Bun Bun is welcome in Raven's Hollow. It is a magical place, after all. In a forest, so bunnies are welcome. <laughs> and no, no big predators are allowed to eat Bunny. No. <laughs> no. Even, even though we what eat... About, <laughs> what about the other kind of eating? <gasps> Sir. What? <laughs> Sweet is gentle Welsh pan dragon. Thank you, Hikari. Precious. <laughs> uh, you forgot a couple descriptors here. 
I can't with the compliments, bro. If I keep laughing, I'm gonna pee myself. <laughs> I'm gonna call an intermission so we can have a break and knows me can go to the bathroom <laughs> and make more tea. So me and Lion will see you in about 15 minutes. Yes, we'll see you in about 15 minutes. So make sure you guys get your stretches in, your posture checks, and your hydrates and snacks. Or me and Lion will come after you. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so let me pop on the intermission screen. So me and Lion will see you guys soon. <laughs> see you in a bit.
All right, guys. Let me pull you back. Go. There we go. Oop. And you're back too. <laughs> Hello, guys. I see you. <laughs> I hope you've had the a lovely dragon break. has returned. No. <laughs> but yes, I have tea. I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I always got to remember because sometimes I'm like, it's okay to take breaks. You know, you're human. You got to, you know, go to the bathroom and stuff. Because, I mean, I drink a lot when I'm on stream because I do talk. So, you know, I stay hydrated. A confetti Being cannon, Paolo. Good. Of course. Boom. There you go, Paolo. Confetti cannons for you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> there you go, honey. Nice confetti cannons. <laughs> Paolo's like, oh, the confetti. <laughs> oh, the confetti. So the cleanup for the confetti, though, it's madness. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what fire is for. Yeah. Fire? You want to burn it? Redeemed head pats. We get head pats off your curry. Ah, it's effective. Oh, thank you. Burning things is effective. <laughs> true, true. I mean, I am a dragon, so yes. Uh, I, I will have to take that into consideration. Thank you for the head pats, Hikari. That is very kind of you. Even lion gets head pats. Apparently. You do. Guests get head pads yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Better than glitter. Yeah, I don't have a oh, say in the matter. I'm being forced to. <laughs> and fireworks. Oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> Hello, Nozomi. Hello, Blue. How are you? I'm glad you could catch a stream today. Blue is one of my new followers and followed me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go, Hikari. Uh, well, Bunny. Nozomi, hi Reaper. I'm glad as well. I hope you're doing well, Blue. So happy to see you. You did say you were interested. <laughs> Release the choice. Oh god, you oh, guys. Oh boy. Oh god. And then there's more jellies. <laughs> With the Santa hat. <laughs> With the Santa hat, yeah. How you doing, Reaper? I hope you're doing well, honey. <laughs> My wiggle friend. All the jellies. <laughs> I love jellyfish. <gasps> oh, you, you've upped your you're upped your likeness now in my. <laughs> if you like jellyfish, you're one of Nozomi's favorites. Thank you. <laughs> Jelly party, yes. Hikari has redeemed a guest ara ara. Lion, do you want to do an ara ara for Hikari? I do not do those. No. No. Would you be okay with a validation instead, Hikari? To swap it out <laughs> i always ask <laughs> if my guests are comfortable with doing an ara ara or a, just a validate that's just a people compliment thing <laughs> mm -hmm. would that be okay hikari if we swapped your ara ara for a compliment <laughs> i redeemed an ara ara for both of me but a validation's okay well tell you what i'll do the ara ara and you can have a nice compliment of lion just bought a great shirt with amazing gel. Oh my god! You need to show me that on Twitter, sir. I want to see that. So, for Hikari, it's Ara Ara Iko Dane. And you can give Hikari a compliment if you want, <laughs> Lion. Uh, I gotta think about that one. Don't do them on the spot, typically. That's okay. Take your time. Hikari will be here. Hi, hi. Model in motion is so good, isn't it? I like your little bees. They're cute. Cute little bees. <laughs> Just bought a great shirt. I want to see that on Twitter, Blue. <laughs> I don't need any comp Hikari. If you come to my stream, you get loved on. <laughs> this is true. You get loved on. I love all my peoples. <laughs> Model in motion is so good. I need updates, Reaper. Reaper, you need to tell me your days off as well, because I need to hang with my favorite Reaper. I, I'm in such demand lately. <laughs> I'm vibing to my stream music. I always do that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad nobody can see me. 
Except except who lives at home dancing sometimes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yes. I think I will send validation to Discord DMs if that's okay. Yes, yes, that's fine. You're gonna send it to that's mine fine. to read out? <laughs> I was gonna send it to Hikari. Hikari, is that okay? If that's okay. If that's okay. Can Lion send you a friend request to DM you the compliment? <laughs> compliment the dragon. You're so sweet and you deserve so much. I'm glad I found you. Oh, Bunny, you're absolutely precious. <laughs> the bun, yeah, Bunny, you're precious. Thank you, sweetie. You're so kind. Reaper, I want an update for your schedule because we need to hang out. <laughs> yeah, Hikari said that is fine. <laughs> Hikari's in my server, sweetie. You'll find her in there. Yep, I just need to get over to the server and find her. I think she's in general. I'll let you know later, love. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Reaper. Yes. Right there, yeah. There we go. Yeah. He'll cheer Hikari up. She'll be feeling a bit sick today. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, how is work, Reaper? Working hard or hardly working? Oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> I'm so lame. <laughs> uh, I try to be funny and then I cringe at myself. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah. It's cute. <laughs> Me trying to tell jokes and then if if I get a laugh at home with one of my jokes, I know I've won because I'm not usually the funny one at home. I try. Most you get out of me is like cheesy dad jokes. <laughs> I think that the, one of my favorites, even though it's so bad, is um, why is the banana good at gymnastics? Gotta ask me why, Lion. He's good at splits. Yeah, he's good at the splits. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. I do love, though, like, cheesy, like, pickup lines and, like, corny dad jokes. Cause they just make me smile so much. I'm like, oh. I judge some of my friends on them sometimes. And I'm just like... <laughs> but yeah, that, that's one of the ways that cheer me up. It's, like, fun, just silly jokes. I'm easy to please. I, I am. <laughs> Very easy to please. Have you sent Hikari the nice compliment, sir? I am currently typing it out. Hope you're not allergic to peanut butter. I'm not, sweetie. I'm not, Paolo. I'm not allergic to anything. Except milk. Well, well more lactose intolerant than anything. <laughs> Because we want to stuff you in a PB a J sandwich. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna be eaten. No. <laughs> Does that make me the jelly <laughs> or the jam for my British folks? <laughs> I do like a PB and J sandwich though. <laughs> I always put way too much peanut butter that should be allowed in a PB and J. Ah. No. The nice thing about that is that you can, yeah, like, put on an amount that you want to put on. Mm. We're supposed to be jelly. Yes, you're the best jelly, sweetie. I'm too cute to be eaten. <laughs> Thank you, Hikari. Yes. Ah, uh, depends on how you mean eaten, but uh, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. Yes, you're the super sweet jelly. Thank you, bunny. You're too precious, darling. I love that cute email. That's so adorable. <laughs> I need to get a nose of me with a blankie. <laughs> I've only got a couple ideas for emotes for nose of me. I'm, I'm not too good at planning stuff. <laughs> like, I can make characters, I'm sure we'll get but like. I'm figure it out for you. Yeah, I'm good at like. I definitely want one with like a cup of tea. Because <laughs> that's, that's standard. Um. Might get an emote of like Nozomi with a little jellyfish on her head. <laughs> that would be a fun one. And obviously a blanket comfort Nozomi. 
But like, obviously, because you can't see Nozomi's eyes, it's always funny to like figure out expressions to do. Do little angry Nozomi with like little steam. That might work. It's on the it's on the to buy list at least. Of finding out obviously what I want to get done. Oop. What is this one? Horny on main knows me. Me am sir. That's par for the course. <laughs> oh, honestly, on my on my Twitter, I'm I openly shrimp for a lot of creators. <laughs> like they're. At modern. least she's cute about it. I am. I try to be be respectful. <laughs> I try. But then I'm like, sir, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's cute. I, I try. I like to hype up all my friends. <laughs> and then if so and then, then people share with me their animal pictures and then I, I just I'm just like I melt. Hikari has this cute just... ferrets, so I'm happy. <laughs> This is just another reason why Nozomi is the, our favorite dragon. <gasps> Guys! <laughs> the compliments will kill me one day. <laughs> I will never stop. No, he, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I, was even, I was even telling my partner earlier, I was like, uh, li Lion's ready. Ready to initiate. <laughs> ready to initiate bits and stuff like that. Guess you better start carving that gravestone. <laughs> Aw, thank you for the biddies. You're on the naughty list. <laughs> Good. You're on the naughty list. Oh no. <laughs> I gotta move that elf later today. <laughs> I hate that elf. It looks so, like, creepy. Oh. But now it's just like phone calls to Santa. <laughs> Always. Oh, one of my beads is falling off my tree. No. <laughs> that that is a chaos Christmas tree. They sent you lion. Very chaotic. <laughs> I do. do. I do, Paolo. Oh, the tree. Yeah, I remember the tree. I have to have an elf on the shelf, Paolo. I have a tiny dragon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if if you knew that. A lot of people know that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so it was one of those, it was a... I think I bought it two years ago. We would get to the tra- oh, many times. I've considered that, yes. The, th the thing was, it was discovered when we were Christmas decorating. And he's like, oh, he's come to play. I'm like, oh, damn it. I thought I well hid had hidden it. <laughs> I might try and hide it like away from the other decorations next year and be like, no, no, he's he's taking a break. <laughs> but I've seen some very creative things that people have done with it with said elf, but I'm just like, that is so much time and effort. And I'm like, oh The one that gets me is when they use flour make little footprints and 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 there's a big pile on the counter in my head it's like that that i've got to clean that <laughs> but for the most part it's it's fun it's just trying to think of new ideas when you, when you have a small house it's like what idea have i not tried yet you know but it happens once a year so i don't mind i like doing it it's a bit fun I think I was more annoyed I didn't get an advent calendar this year. I need to have words with my mother. <laughs> Even though I'm an adult, my mum gets me Easter eggs still and she'll get me an advent calendar sometimes. So I'm like, where's my yeah, advent, advent calendar? Advent calendars are fine. Yeah, it's like, where's my advent calendar? Plus the amount that they're bringing out for adults. I'm like, yes, please. Like, Do you I... mean like like wine ones or like oh, yeah, other like, adult things? You can, oh, you can get met any form of like ones for adults so like those ones as well like i was watching okay. i was watching i feel like that would be expensive oh yeah i was watching like sorted food on youtube the other day and they were going over like bougie and like expensive advent calendars i shit you not there was this massive one and i mean this is like say like 
quite a, it's not like a small advent calendar, so it's a big and bulky one, right? Okay. And it's, it's literally 24 days of cans of beer. And in the middle, they all, huh. when it opens out, it has like a glass you can enjoy it with. I want oh, the spicy right. ones, of course, Rage. That would be fun. But yeah, apparently it costs them at least about nearly £200 for this. Um, and what you could do with the cans after when they're empty is stack them up in the order you get them and they make like a picture. But apparently like it's it was it was a once in a lifetime calendar because um, they only brought those specialty like craft beers out for the advent calendar. Um, there was one that was like um, a turkey and stuffing type flavor of craft beer, and they tried it and it tasted like um, like turkey gravy. You know, uh, there was another one that was from a famous like um, chocolatier and patisserie that cost them about like eighty pound or something. Um, there's another type, so you might like this one. It's because uh, you like to cook. This is like you had like 20, 25 slots, and in each one leading up to twenty five was a sachet of spices, the different like Ooh. spices for cooking. Um, and in the in the twenty fifth one, there was like a full jar of like a spice blend. Um, and in each of the little sachets that came with, they had like a recipe card where you could use it on. So like you could like spice up like a bowl of chips or top your like porridge or oatmeal with one of them. They also have tea advent calendars as well. They have like, obviously they have, um, there's a Nightmare Before Christmas one where you get figurines. Um, they have a, a lot that they had one, which is like, um, it's a different take on an advent calendar, but it because they send them you over in like three deliveries, but it's cheese. It is, I think that was the most expensive one they had. It was about two fifty, but you get three deliveries of like eight, um, sixteen, and then like so the rest of the cheeses, and it's like full like wedges of cheese or small circles of cheese. And it tells you like what they pair with and how. You know it's what made. would be funny? Mm -hmm. Take the cheese one, mm -hmm. pair it with a wine one, and just let the chaos unfold. You can have ones with wine. Like, I didn't know that there was like the the range of advent calendars like over the years has drastically grown since mm -hmm. I was a kid because it was just always the chocolate that you got you know the cheapy chocolate advent calendars <laughs> yep. you got there's also ones for candles i've seen ones with bath bombs lion beyond those big brain moves exactly like you can actually get yep. ones with wine well, as well the, the funny part the funny part with pairing the wine one and the cheese one is that you have absolutely no way of knowing if they're going to pair well together or not yeah so it's just chaos like for me i'm more of a sweet wine person i don't like red wine um, I'm more of a rosé type of person, to be honest, so I always get like a, a bottle or two of rosé for Christmas. Um, or, you know, we, we have like the champagne for Christmas. But like, I'm, I'm not a fan of red wine, but I like cocktails. You can also get like cocktail ones as well. They have, I've seen ones for like soaps, like handcrafted stuff. They've, they've got advent calendars for like writers for art supplies like there's you know you can make an advent calendar of absolutely anything um and it depends on you you just have to go looking for them but i will say be prepared for to spend a bit of money on these bougie ones like you know because say if you there's one from the company lush obviously they do bath bombs and obviously lush can be kind of expensive um, there's somebody on TikTok who reviewed them because they like bath bombs, obviously. And if you have the money, go, you know, treat yourself to one. Like, the, there's a lot I've seen, especially that's catered toward, like, people who love to cook. Like, you can get, like, spice ones, you know, seasoning ones, you know. Um, which I think is really cool. As I said, it'd be definitely an advent calendar you'd like, Lion, because you like to cook. 
Um, yes, cooking is fun. And that cost, I think, about 50-ish pound. So, like, but they also, you know, at least then you can sample different spices and see which ones you like. So, like, at a later date, if you go to the store, you could pick up an actual jar of said spice blends that you like. Um, hmm. But there's always, there's a tea one as well. There's also been, like, a coffee one, uh, things like that. Another person um, is going through TikTok at the minute with um, an advent calendar of different marshmallows. And, um, you know, they do a little rating of it and stuff like that. He does it with his kids as well. It's like a family thing. They even do the little toasting of the marshmallow and, you know, um, rating it and stuff like that. I think day mm. nine he did rhubarb and custard flavoured uh, marshmallow. Oh, interesting. But, yeah, so you... you it's one of those. You know there were rhubarb flavored marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like rhubarb and custard are quite a prominent flavor for UK, like sweets and stuff like that. You can get quite a few boiled sweets mm. ones. You can also get like there's a candy called Squashies here in the UK. You can get rhubarb and custard right. flavored. They're my mum's favorite because she likes rhubarb. Um, we used to have in my mum's garden. She actually has a rhubarb plant. And uh, many, many years ago, when I was still young and I still lived with my mum, we used there was a lady, an nice old lady who lived two doors down from my mum. And my mum never really used the rhubarb; she just had it there. You know, it was just growing for like the longest time. Um, and we used to give it to the lady who lived two doors down, and she'd make some really nice treats with it, and she'd bring it over. And things like that um we get some treats out of that um and then as i got older i was like you know what i'll start making stuff so i i made a rhubarb crumble with it or i'd make like uh jams or whatever with stuff you know you use what you have as, as they say my my grandmother had two cooking apple trees as well so i used to know how to make applesauce like for dinners and things like that but uh, if you do have the money, you can like find pretty much advent calendars for everything. If you'll probably find them in Amazon, like there's even ones like so perfume companies do them as well. I've also known one for like jewelry, so like um, jewelers have done one, so you get like a bit of expensive jewelry in each one, and that... they are expensive, bro. What? Yeah, like. You can find like. Jeez, that's like. <laughs> Hello, circus. How are you, Darlin? It's ridiculous. Okay. Mhm. Mm like, it's it's become quite um. Oh, what's the word? They've um, revolutionized them in it, per se. So it's not just the standard chocolate ones anymore. They, because I think people found that. You know, as we get older and stuff, obviously we have different tastes, and they—I think they wanted to um, bring like the joy of advent calendars to people of all ages, you know, and different likes and stuff. Like, I watch some people like judge like some of the advent calendars they have every day, and I'm like, okay, you know, and but it's one of those I can't really like say oh that sounds good if i've not tried it myself we love you nozomi we well have to, lurk. to and... be fair i've i've seen people say that uh salad on pizza sounds bad oh but hear me out Here to you take just the shell yeah and you build a salad on top of it okay it's a taco yeah, vegetarian. It's an taco. Italian. It's an, it, no, it's an Italian taco. It's mm. a, well, it's still a vegetarian. Or you could add meat to it, but it's, it's like an Italian taco. Yeah. You're not putting any sauce on it. You can still put cheese on it, and it ends up being pretty good, even though it sounds oh salad on pizza. No, that sounds wrong, but it works. But as well, if say like it's say like a thick crust pizza, and you've got like your salad on it and stuff. After you've eaten the salad, you've got like a big bread stick or something to eat. Oh, no, 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 you, you eat the pizza with the salad, so you, like a taco. I but eat it's salad with pizza all the time. Hmm. Yeah, it's I, a thing. 
I should eat more it's salad, like... but like I prefer my, my vegetables, honestly. I, I like eating my like vegetables, like my broccoli, I like sprouts, I like carrots. I like all like those types of vegetables. Um, I like tomatoes, but they're a fruit. Um, but I don't, I should eat more salad-y stuff, but I don't. But I make up for that. Release the, the jellies. Re release the jellies for circus, of course, honey. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you when you were talking to Circus earlier. Oh, that's okay. How are you doing, Circus? He's busy with work today. Circus be working. So many jellies this stream, of course. Look, jellies, yes. All the jellies. <laughs> I hate cooked veggies. I like my veggies raw. I like, I like like cooked vegetables if it's like broccoli or sprouts like i can eat carrots raw like if i'm dipping it in hummus but like it depends i don't like bell peppers though i've tried for so long unless it's like thoroughly cooked into something i can't eat a bell pepper raw um or like if it's on a pizza like a green bell pepper i can eat that my sister used to like cut up bell peppers and eat them just raw out of a bowl Broccoli's the only cooked veggie I can tolerate. I'm gonna say, it's it's a weird taste and texture for me with a bell pepper. I'm like, no. I can't do peppers either. Mm. I can do like spicy peppers. I like jalapenos. It's just the sweet one. It's like, huh? It, it's or the ones that are considered sweet. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: jalapeno is actually a sweet pepper. They're spicy. The seeds and the oil inside them are spicy. Hmm. The flesh itself is actually very sweet. I've I've tried eating a jalapeno never again. No. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'm not saying you should go eat it. I'm just saying. Yeah. And it was it's purely sweet. by accident as well, because my friend again <laughs> went to Subway, got me a sandwich, and I told you earlier I get my um, dill pickles on there because I love them. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. obviously, in the mix of obviously Subway, you know, picking up and grabbing stuff. One of the jalapenos yep, mixed in with the, dropped, yep. it dropped into it. So obviously when they put my dill pickles on, this dropped jalapeno was in amongst them. And I took this entire bite of this Subway sandwich. So the entire half, like, thick slice of jalapeno was on there. So I ate that. And it was just one of those things of, like, my friends were just freaking the hell out because I was just dying. <laughs> I hate bell peps except the green ones. I cut them into slices and eat them cold and raw. They make a nice hops. Uh, I have to cook them like if they're on like if I have them, they have to be all small or thinly sliced and just cooked. Um, and if I eat it with everything like a pizza and stuff, I love jalapeno poppers. Oh, everyone in my house except me likes them. <laughs> and I was like, no. I was like, no. I can't deal with spice. I can deal with like a bit of peppery stuff, but like, you know, like I remember when I went. On a little seaside holiday, they had a curry night in this this place we went to, and one of my childhood friends at the time was like, "Eat the spiciest curry with me there." Now, mind you, I'm like about 10, 12 years old. I'm a dead person there at that point. I was like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't like them for some reason. Some veggies mess my stomach up. Yeah, that's fair. I think is what I've grown up though with vegetables. It's it's a case of you know eat your vegetables; they're good for you. Um, I used to like hate sprouts and stuff as a kid and vegetables as a kid, but like now as an adult, I'm like give me vegetables. <laughs> like I'd happily just eat like a bowl of like cooked broccoli. I'm fine with it. Sliced candied Sprout. jalapenos. They're good. Ab Who candies a jalapeno? What is that a? Is that a thing? That's so bizarre. I've never heard of a candied jalapeno before. I I know that they candied like sliced like fruits and stuff, but a jalapeno. they candy pretty much everything. Hmm. Yeah. I it's it's tricky to candy stuff as well. Like you have to do it a certain way and things like that. Oh yeah, no. If you do it wrong, it ends up tacky. If you do it wrong, it ends up way too hard. Mm. Uh, yeah. I've, or I've, I've you can seen, burn it because sugar's like that. Yeah, I've seen people like make them on TikTok and things like that. If you can jalapeno, if you can candy bugs, you can candy a jalapeno. I want to at least try bugs, you know, to say I've tried them in life. 
Mexican candies a lot. I think I've had a bug once. Mm. Well, purposefully had a bug once. Obviously, like, I can't control if I'm asleep and a bug climbs into my mouth. <laughs> That's like a myth, apparently. You're welcome for... I mean, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, they say, you know, apparently in your sleep you swallow like seven spiders. I'm like, nah, no, we don't. No way. Well, not a night, that's for sure. But jalapeno I chocolate. It, you know, I've heard happens. like I've heard like spicy chocolate and jalapeno chocolate and chili chocolate is supposedly nice, but okay, chili chocolate's actually really good. I don't know. I'd be I'd be too chicken to try it because it's spicy, and I'm a, that's I'm fair. A that's wuss. fair. I'm a wuss with spice. That's fair. <laughs> but you don't have to try it. It's it is considered good in general. Yeah. Like I know, like. Over in America, it's it's very uncommon that you pair chocolate and orange together. No, it's not. Like, so, there's a chocolate bar we have called the Terry's Chocolate Orange. I've watched someone have... try to take a bite out of that. That was so funny. So, we have chocolate oranges that are basically, it's orange-infused chocolate molded into slices, uh, shaped like orange slices, and then... Um, put into a, a ball that is a terry's chocolate orange is it okay <laughs> yeah that's terry's chocolate orange yeah. there was literally yeah was someone on tiktok had received a terry's chocolate orange right and they, and they were definitely over states so um, sure, sure. you're supposed to smack it so it breaks into the segments right this person got the entire ball and tried to take yeah. a bite out of it and i was like yeah. And then the amount yeah. of like stressed british people i'd seen responding to that video you're supposed to eat it like an orange. Yeah, you're supposed to break it. You know? You're, you're supposed to peel it and then get it into slices and then eat it. Yeah, we've also got chocolate <laughs> We got these orange jelly covered in chocolate. I need to try that, yep. Paolo. That sounds so tasty. Yep. That reminds me of or, like a, um, a chocolate Turkish delight. That sounds really nice. Or an, uh, an orange cream filled chocolate. I don't, really I don't, good. I don't like those. I've, we have them around okay. Christmas time. They have like the orange ones and the strawberry ones. Right, um, right. And it's, it's. I find the cream is too sweet. Like there's too much cream to chocolate ratio. Like if they made the shell of the chocolate a bit thicker, then, then yeah. But it's usually over here they do dark chocolate shells with these creams inside, and the balance is all wrong. Like the dark chocolate is way too bitter to go with the cream so you don't get like a compliment you just get super sweet and then bitter as fuck i want a chocolate orange now i have to wait till christmas to get one i know all the all the chocolate ones a rage saw that one yes i do i do enjoy like i have to be in the mood for it though like a chocolate orange we have cherry yeah. ones here oh i've never tried cherry one there was a they they'd made one oh, year. Oh, Yeah. They made like um one year a white Terry chocolate orange. So instead of the regular milk chocolate, they just replaced it with white, and it was still infused with like the orange and stuff. But they also put popping candies in it, so can uh, you know pop rocks in it. Hmm. And it was so fun to eat because you take a bite, and as the chocolate and and flavors melting, you get all the little popping from the pop rocks. Mm -hmm. get one for christmas so i only eat it once a year. that's a fair tradition like i have to be in the mood for it like we can buy them all year round here because they even have like packets of like um terry's chocolate orange like mini slices so you get mini little orange se like chocolate segments um and things like that so you can buy them as a whole ball or you can buy them like bagged but like already like segmented the crispy ones. Oh, yes! The crispy ones are good, too, with little biscuits in them. Little cereals. Mm-hmm. I do, I do like different um, different ones. I I like chocolate. <laughs> I have a big sweet tooth. Chocolate is very good. Yes. Like, I'm not a big fan of, like, gummy candies. Only because oh, they take too long to, like, chew sometimes. The one with the Pop Rocks is good, Hikari. Definitely. I highly recommend that. I like, um... For me, a once a year treat for me is black licorice. So we have a sweet called, like, licorice all sorts here. So you can get, obviously, pure black licorice. I eat... I get that as a gift uh, every Christmas. 
We chew any and all hard candy, personally. You chew your hard candy? Oh god, your teeth! <laughs> hard candy is actually really good for like a, a, a workout or something. Because you can pop it in and then you'll have it there. Yeah. And you'll keep not generating saliva, but yeah. you'll keep recycling it. Yeah. And it'll keep you hydrated for longer. It's really interesting. I like lollipops. They're, they're cool, too. I love black yeah. licorice. Yeah, black licorice is one of my... It's it's one of my favorites, but I like to get it once a year. So around Christmas time, I'll always get like some form of black licorice as like a as a sweet for my stocking, um, which which I enjoy, you know. But if I have it like any more times than once a year, I get bored of it. Finish the talking angry bunny. I haven't done the knock talking bunny. Oh my god! I can't wait to see it, bunny. <laughs> You're working very hard today. If you use your mouth like a hydraulic press as opposed to a grinder, it's actually... Oh no, like my teeth will just be in pain, bro. <laughs> I I see people oh, like on... depends on the hard candy. I see people on TikTok do those little, you know, close-up mouth-eating like mukbang things. And they'll eat something that's like really hard or crunchy and I'm just sort of cringe. I'm like, your teeth must be hella strong. <laughs> and you don't have cavities and stuff like that. I'm like, oh. It's the same people who bite ice cream. It's like, oh. <laughs> I've seen somebody take a massive bite out of a cold ice cream on a stick and I've just like, or, or like crunched an ice cube and my teeth have just sort of gone, nope. Yep. Oh. That hurts. Is that weird? No, like a lot of people like have different tolerances. Like I've seen a lot of people just like crunch away on hard candies or ice cubes or like anything. Cold. Well, some ice cubes, some ice cubes are soft enough that instead of like crunching it, it just kind of squishes. Yeah. Until it breaks apart. But for me, it's those like, ones it's, are like it's the cold. Okay for me. to yeah, yeah, those ones are like okay to bite, but they're still cold, and like you shouldn't be eating ice. No, no, it's 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 not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Like, but for, for me, if it's too cold, like, cause I have sensitive teeth, so if it's too hot or too cold, like, you know, I can't drink like scalding hot tea. I do have to wait for for a little bit just for it to be like drinkable. Otherwise, I'm just like ah ah no. Yep. Tea, I chew I on crushed ice a lot. It's a comfort thing. Yeah, I suppose it is. It's a comfort for a lot of people. I mean, praise for you not having sensitive teeth. <laughs> like, you know, even if it just happens to get on mine, I'm like, eh, no. <laughs> Deal. Yeah, I got sensitive teeth, so no no crunching on ice cubes. You can crunch on all the ice for us, Hikari. <laughs> yes. I used to remember, so as a kid, I had a Mr. Frosty, so it's like your own little snow cone maker and stuff like that. Such a, so you think it's the amazingest joy of having, you no, know, it's so tedious to do and make. Especially like, because the plastic little gears are not enough to, you know, crush your eyes. My dentist got mad at me for it because one of my teeth chipped a little because of my ice cube. <gasps> no! Hello, Hoshi! How are you, sweetheart? <laughs> this is why we don't chew hard things. No. I'm just gonna say it. This is why we don't oh, do that. Oh, look at the little ruined dance emote. They're so cute. <laughs> yes, it's, it's one of those, like... Have one of the, like, cherry Twizzlers or something that's, like, chewable. You know? Yeah. Or like a long strawberry lace. So you've got like a long way to go. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm joined by the lovely lion today. That's me. Yeah. And our, our talks vary a lot. <laughs> and I got my drinks and things like that. And we had a nice break. Because <laughs> I, I forget that, you know, I'm, I'm a person still. <laughs> It's like, you, you gotta go to the bathroom sometimes, but I'm like, I don't want to leave the people. <laughs> I ha I have issues, it's fine. And we had some lovely gift subs earlier. Pa Paolo staking claim to the top. I know. I always forget, though. Like, I'll get so distracted with things, Hoshi, I forget that it's like, yeah, you have a bodily function that needs to go to the bathroom. 
and things like that. It's like, go do that now. And I'm like, I should do that now, shouldn't I? <laughs> but like, I forget. But then, and then, because I've got my drinks and stuff, I'm just like constantly filling up on liquid, as you do. Don't worry too much about it, though. You're cute when you're distracted. Shut up, I'm not, bro. <laughs> you are? I have ADD, so that happens quite a lot. <sighs> oh, another Mr. Pinkerton voice, Ikari. Is there something specific you'd like me to say in it? What would you like me to say in the Mr. Pinkerton voice, Ikari? Oh, it's cute. God damn it, Paolo. <laughs> He's right. I can't wait to see the artwork that Paolo's going to commission of us too. It's super yeah, cute. Yeah, that, that should be interesting. That yeah. should be interesting. I told you the idea, didn't I? It was really cute. Yes, you did. I like it. I, I, oh, like Paolo in his little, little glass. I'm just, ah! But release the jellies from Hoshi. Hey, Kari, what do you want me to say in Mr. Pinkerton's voice, sweetie? I don't know, though. I guess say whatever you can come up with. Well now, Miss Hikari, come on now, you should be a bit more decisive at that. I can't make a deal with such a sweet darling like yourself if you're not specific. This little demon needs more from our relationship, you see. <laughs> I hope that was okay. <laughs> I hope that was okay, Hikari. Oh, I can still oh, feel that boy. voice in my throat as well. Like, when I stop, I can still feel him, like, going, I'll come back out in a minute. <laughs> Jesus, I regret it already. Why? Why'd you regret it, Hikari? Do you not like spending time with Mr. Pinkerton? <laughs> I am the devil. I am sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I think I th I think I shock people enough when that happens, and and I'm just like yeah 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 I can do that. <laughs> uh, they're like, but how do you? It makes my ribs hit from laughing. I remember because you like it so much. Uh, well, I'm honored, Miss Hikari, that I can make you laugh. I aim to please. <laughs> oh, it's one of my favorite voices to do, and I created him by accident. That's how most of my voices happen, though. Like, I'll be messing around with, like, the levels of my voice, especially if I've been recording stuff um, for, like, pieces and things like that. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, Hikari. Glad I made you laugh, honey. <laughs> People like those to be so cute. Her voice is so nice. Then, boom, I just bring those out. <laughs> It doesn't really change much. No, it doesn't really change much, I suppose. Yeah, and they just end up hyping me up because it's like, you're so talented, Nilsa me. Like, am I? Okay, thank you. You are? <laughs> I try. I try at least. Uh, but some t most, no. one of my tips as well, like for me, how I try and perfect um, access is I listen to a lot of people because all I hear is like, well, howdy there, little lady. What can I do for you that kills me every time? <laughs> That's true, yeah. Like, he's your very typical southern uh, upbeat um, demon. Complete with, like, one of those straw little hats with the ribbon around it. And, like, his stripy shirt and his, like, white pants and his little uh, suspenders as he was in the book. <laughs> All I can think of right now is the devil goes down to Georgia. Mm hmm. Like, he was pictured as this character in the story I read. And I was like, I need to give him a voice because they emphasized a lot on his, like, tone of voice. And I was like, right, I need to give him this, like, in my head, it's like, this is how he sounds. And I tried it and I was like, oh, this works. Like, you know, I couldn't, like, stop and I just, like, had to carry on. So I carried on the entirety of this story. Um, in that voice when it was his lines I had to say and I was just like I fell in love with the with the character I'd made like so much and I was like this is this is now my Mr. Pinkerton <laughs> if the devil goes down to Georgia that implies either Georgia is below hell or the devil is a northerner and that's true no, the devil is a part timer um I believe it, it, there's a third thing it could mean in that 
would be that Georgia is just in a valley. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know. I would have to look at a topographical map of the United States, and I'm not taking the time to do that. I'm not insane. <laughs> not insane. Um, no. Slightly. <laughs> not completely. <laughs> crazy. I'm crazy. Not insane. Yes. Um, <laughs> but... Essentially, though, the, yes. the devil can, That's like, the go idea. where he pleases, though, because obviously you've, well, got, yeah, you've, so you've got the devil's he's, bridge in he's... Wales. The thing is, if we look at um, particularly the... This is a folklore slash mythology stream, so I'm gonna go there. Go if we look at the um, the the lore surrounding the devil in the original Old Testament Bible, mm -hmm. um, he's not stuck in hell oh, by no. any means. He's just banned from heaven. Yeah, he can pretty much like Earth itself is pretty much his playing field. Like, something like that, yeah. Him and his demons, um, like, because obviously uh, Mr. Pinkerton is actually, in the story that I um, found him from, he was one of Satan's, obviously, demons to try and bargain people's souls to, like, in, yes. the, in this case, Mr. Pinkerton was a gentleman who came to proposition a bargain to a gentleman whose wife was in a coma. And he, uh, they were, he was given, um, like, he was trying to fight for um, his wife's family not to turn off life support because, you know, and he had to do a bunch of, like, trials um, and things like that. But you have to be very careful with how you speak to Mr. Pinkerton because everything you say is essentially you agreeing to something or not. Um, like... Even if, like, he hadn't gone to the trials originally, it was a case of, you know, he'd already agreed to play Mr. Pinkerton's game way before he'd agreed himself knowingly to it, because he'd already, like, conversed yep. with Mr. Pinkerton when Mr. Pinkerton showed up at his door. Um, and he'd conversed with Mr. Pinkerton, um, you know, even though he said he wasn't interested and tried to avoid Mr. Pinkerton for a bit, he technically already agreed to the trials that would follow later on down the line um, to try and save his wife. Um, mm. You know, in the end, though, the, the guy did outsmart Mr. Pinkerton. And, it, it you know, he, you know, which, which sucks because no demon does like to be tricked out of anything, you know. Um, like, in one of the stories in Wales with the Devil's Bridge, um, the Satan had tried to get the soul of this old lady to help her cross a bridge. So he built this bridge for this woman with the exception of the first living thing to cross the bridge belonged to Satan. So what the old lady did had tossed some food across the bridge and her dog had run after it. So in the end, Satan did have to take the dog's soul. And then out of embarrassment, he pretty much avoided Wales. And now there are actually three ways around that bridge, to be honest. There's the Devil's Bridge itself. <laughs> but there's two other ways you can get around it as well. So, depending on the story, if you believe it or not, you can either choose to cross Devil's Bridge, or you can take the other two routes that cross the river, which are close by to the bridge, because an old lady had outsmarted the devil. And things like that. So, it's all about the wording when it comes to, like, the fallen... Yep. Per se, and that can there be was, that uh, can also be said for the higher ups as well. The same as any type of fey or mythical being, you know, be very careful with your wording, with what you accept, because you can involuntary like yep. accept stuff as well. You know, um, be be a bit careful with how you treat them as well. And if say um, a mythological creature does something nice for you, do not share it. Do not sh do not tell people of it. Because they'll take away your benefits. You know, if, you know, somebody, if a fae is leaving you some gold or food to help you in a crisis, don't run to your neighbors and tell them what's happened because the gifts will stop. You know, you should be yep. secretly thankful, like in your own way. You know, just don't be telling people about it because, you know, as they say, all good things must come to an end. You know? It's, it's like the whole genie thing, you know, they, they kept it like, you know, they had rules and everything. It's like, you get three wishes, but you can't wish for this, this, and this. 
uh, there's actually a, a D and D version of this story. Mm -hmm. So the party is going along. They uh, they come across a devil on the road, and the devil says, uh, "I don't remember exactly what he said, but um, he said something along the lines of." You're not allowed to pass unless you make a deal with me. Okay. So the fighter in the group says, uh, Can you wait there for five seconds? And the devil says, Sure, that's no problem. Five seconds later, the fighter says, All right, our deal's done. <laughs> um, but the fallen angel bit, yes. Like, the devil named Lucifer was at a time the greatest of angels and got uh, too big of a head, got jealous of God and um, started a rebellion uh, after which he was cast out of heaven. Mm -hmm. So in, in Welsh folklore yeah. as well, like later down in a lot of the research I found, um, there's a lot that's um, related, obviously, to devils, demons, and angels and stuff as well, which do play a part in folklore and things like that. Speaking of, we have something called the Clan Rothen Legend. So, I'm indebted to the Reverend R. Jones, Rector of Clan Isel, Bala, for the following legend. I may state that Mr. Jones is a native of Llanrothen in Merion... Oh, God. Merionothyshire, a parish in close proximity to the scene of the story. Mr. Jones's informant was his mother, a lady whose mind was well stored with tales of bygone times, and my friend and informant inherits his mother's retentive memory, as well as her love of ancient lore. A certain man fell in love with a beautiful fairy lady and he wished to marry her. She consented to do so, but warned him that if he ever touched her with iron, she would leave him immediately. This stipulation weighed but lightly on the lover. They were married. For many years, they lived most happily together, and several children were born of them. A sad mishap, however, one day overtook them. They were together crossing Traith Mower in... Oh, God. Pen... Oh, God. Pen... <laughs> Pen Rhyn de Dreith on horseback, when the man's horse became restive and jerked his head towards the woman, and a bit of the bridle touched the left arm of the fairy wife, and she at once told her husband that they must part forever. She was greatly distressed and implored her not to leave him. She said she could not stay. Then the man, appealing to a mother's love for her children, begged that she would, for the, for the sake of their offspring, continue to dwell with him and them, and said he, what will become of our children without their mother? Her answer was, Gadoch i ddant bod i benai cochian a thrunai hirion. Let them be red-headed and long-nosed. Having uttered th these words, she disappeared and was never seen afterwards. No Welsh taboo story can be complete without the pretty tale of the Van Lake legend, or as it is called, the Mudvai legend, because of its intrinsic beauty and worth, and for the sake of comparison with the preceding stories, I will relate this legend. There are several versions extent. Mr. Wirt Sykes, in his British Goblius, has one of the Combro Britain has one, but the best is that recorded by Professor Rees in the Comroder, Volume 4, page 163 in his Welsh fairy tales. There are other readings of the legends to be met with. I will first of all give the epitome of the professor's version. And this is the Mudvai legend. A widow who had an only son was obliged, in consequence of the large flocks she possessed, to send under the care of her son a portion of her cattle to graze on the Black Mountain near a small lake called Linavan Bach. One day the son perceived, to his great astonishment, a most beautiful creature with flowing hair, sitting on the unruffled surface of the lake, combing her tresses, the water serving as a mirror. Suddenly she beheld the young man standing on the brink of the lake, with his eyes riveted on her. 
and unconsciously offering herself the provision of barley bread and cheese with which he had been provided when he left his home. Bewildered by a feeling of love and admiration for this object before him, he continued to hold out his hand toward the lady, who imperceptibly glided near to him, but gently refused the offering of his provisions. He attempted to touch her, but she eluded his grasp, saying, Kras divara, need howith, vinala. Hard baked is thy bread, it is not easy to catch me. She immediately dived under the water and disappeared, leaving the love stricken youth to return home a prey to disappointment and regret that he had been unable to make further acquaintance with the lovely maiden with whom he had desperately fallen in love. On his return home, he communicated to his mother the extraordinary vision. She advised him to take some unbaked dough the next time in his pocket as there must have been some spell connected with the hard-baked bread, or barakras, which prevented him catching the lady. Next morning, before the sun was up, the young man was at the lake, not for the purpose of looking after the cattle, but that he might again witness the enchanting vision from the previous day. In vain did he glance over the surface of the lake, nothing met his view, save the ripples occasionally by a stiff breeze and a dark cloud hung heavily on the summer of the, vi of the van. Hours passed on, the wind was hushed, and overhanging clouds had vanished. When the youth was startled by seeing some of his mother's cattle in the precipitous side of the acclivity, ne nearly on the opposite side of the lake. As he was hastening away to rescue them from their perilous position, the object of his search again appeared to him, and seemed much more beautiful than when he first beheld her. His hand was again held out to her full of unbaked bread, which he offered to her with an urgent proffer of his heart also and vows of eternal attachment, all of which were refused by her saying, Place de vara tini vina. Unbaked is thy bread, I will not have thee. But the smiles that played upon her features as the lady vanished beneath the waters forbade him to disappear and cheered him on his way home. His aged parent was acquainted with his ill success and suggested that his bread should the next time be but slightly baked as most likely to please the mysterious being. Impelled by love, the youth left his mother's home early next morning. He was soon near the margin of the lake impatiently awaiting the reappearance of the lady. The sheep and goats browsed on the precipitous side of the van and the cattle strayed amongst the rocks, rain and sunshine came and passed away, unheeded by the youth, who was wrapped up in looking for the appearance of her who had stolen his heart. The sun was verging toward the west, and the young man, casting a sad look over the waters, ear departing homewards, was astonished to see several cows walking along its surface, and, what was more pleasing to his sight, the maiden reappeared, even lovelier than ever. She approached the land and he rushed to meet her in the water. A smile encouraged him to seize her hand and she accepted the moderately baked bread he offered her and after some persuasion she consented to becoming his wife on condition that they should live together until she received from him three blows without a cause. Three ergid diakos, three causeless blows. When should he ever happened to strike her three such blows, she would leave him forever. These conditions were readily and joyfully accepted. Thus, the lady of the lake became engaged to the young man, and having loosed her hand for a moment, she darted away to dive into the lake. The grief of the lover at this disappearance of his, affianced was such that he was determined to cast himself headlong into the unfathomed depths and thus end his life. As he was at the point of committing this rash act, there emerged out of the lake two most beautiful ladies accompanied by a hoary-headed man of noble mien and extraordinary stature, but having otherwise all the force and strength of youth. This man addressed the youth, saying that, as he proposed to marry one of his daughters, he consented to the union, provided the young man could distinguish which of the two ladies before him was the object of his affection. This was no easy task, 
as the maidens were perfect counterparts of each other. Whilst the young man narrowly scanned the two ladies and failed to perceive the least difference betwixt the two, one of them thrust her foot a slight degree forward. The motion, simple as it was, did not escape the observation of the youth and he discovered a trifling variation in the mode in which their sandals were tied. This at once put an end to the dilemma, for he had on previous occasions noticed the peculiarity of her shoe tie, and he boldly took hold of her hand. Thou hast chosen rightly, said the father. Be to her a kind and faithful husband, and I will give her, as a dowry, as many sheep, cattle, goats and horses as she can count on each without having a drawing in her breath. But remember that if you prove unkind to her at any time and strike her three times without a cause, she shall return to me and shall bring all her stock with her. Such was the marriage settlement to which the young man gladly assented, for the bride was desired to count the number of sheep she was to have. She immediately adopted the mode of counting by fives, thus, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, as many times as possible in rapid succession till her breath was exhausted. The same process of reckoning had to determine the number of goats, cattle and horses respectfully, and in an instant the full number of each came out of the lake when called upon by the father. The young couple were to be married and went to reside at a farm called Eskia Hlaithdi near Midvai, where they lived in prosperity and happiness for several years and became the parents of three beautiful sons. Once upon a time, there was a christening in the neighbourhood to which the parents were invited. When the day arrived, the wife appeared reluctant to attend the christening, alleging, alleging that the distance was too great for her to walk. Her husband told her to fetch one of the horses from the field. I will, said she, if you will bring me my gloves which I left at our house. He went for the gloves and finding she had not gone for the horse, he playfully slapped her shoulder with one of them saying, Dos, dos, go, go. When she reminded him of the terms on which she consented to marry him and warned him to be more cautious in the future as he had now given her one causeless blow. On another occasion when they were together at the wedding and the assembled guests greatly enjoying themselves, the wife burst into tears and sobbed most piteously. Her husband touched her on the shoulder and inquired the cause of her weeping. She said, Now people are entering into trouble, and your troubles are likely to commence, as you have the second time stricken me without cause. Years passed on, and their children had grown up and were particularly clever young men. Amidst so many worldly blessings, the husband almost forgot that the only one causeless blow would destroy his prosperity. Still, he was watchful lest any trivial occurrence should take place which his wife must regard as a breach of their marriage contract. She told him that her affection for him was unbated and warned him to be careful lest through inadvertence he might give the last and only blow which, by an unalterable destiny over which he had no control, would separate them forever. One day it happened that they went to a funeral together where, in the midst of mourning and grief at the house of the deceased, she appeared in the gayest of spirits and indulged in inconsiderable fits of laughter, which so shocked her husband that he touched her, saying, Hush, hush, don't laugh. She said that she laughed because people, when they die, go out of trouble, and rising up, she went out of the house, saying, The last blow has been struck, our marriage contract is broken, and at the end, farewell. Then she started off towards Esgarthlaithdia, where she called her cattle and other stock together, each by name, not forgetting the little black calf which had been slaughtered and was suspended on the hook. And away went the calf and all the stock, with the lady across Midvai Mountain, and disappeared beneath the waters of the lake whence the lady had come. The four oxen that were ploughing departed, drawing after them the plough, which made a furrow in the ground, which remains a testimony of the truth of this story. She is said to have appeared to her sons and accosting Ruathlon, her firstborn, to have informed him that he was to be a benefactor to mankind through healing all manner of their diseases and she furnished him with prescriptions and instructions for the pre yeah, preservation of health. 
Then, promising to meet him when her counsel was most needed, she vanished. On several other occasions, she met her sons and pointed out to them plants and herbs and revealed to them their medicinal qualities and virtues. So ends the Mithvi legend. A variant of this tale appears in the form of a letter in the Cambro Britain, volume 2, pages 313 to 315. The editor prefaces that the legend with the remark that the tale acquires an additional interest from its resemblance in one particular to a similar tradition current in Scotland, wherein certain beasts brought from a lake, as in this tale, play much the same part as it here is described. The volume of the Cambro Britain now referred to was published in 1821, and apparently the writer, who calls himself Theon Sin Ab Tidville, communicates as an written tradition afloat in Carmarthenshire, but he does not tell us whence he obtained the story, as the tale differs in some particulars from that already given. I will transcribe it. We'll take a break for a minute. <laughs> there are so many renditions of the Lady of the Lake, um, and that one was the one that I've grown up with herein. Um, all the times that he'd struck her care carelessly like we learn about so especially if you do things such as like drama or performing arts here you, you always get told about the lady of the lake story because it's you know it's quite a good tale to speak of i was gonna say i thought we'd heard that one a couple times yeah there are so, so there are so many renditions of this that i have pretty much a lot of the versions here as well to share um and they, they do offer like some types of like subliminal like messages to um in how we like treat our spouses and things like that um a lot of people like i've heard marriage counselors use this story as well um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the tale goes that her three sons were some of the best doctors in that time period because of her life lessons. Like, even though her husband had wronged her, she still came to take care of her children and teach them lessons through life. That's good. You know, and it, it, it's also another thing of like, you know, even though their marriage failed, she didn't, you know, leave her children behind. She still came to visit them. But in terms of like the Fae and everything, they have very strict laws, um, like cultures and regulations that they follow to a T. And something that we, such as like a simple tap on the shoulder... Is considered like much more of a great deal to say someone of the fey folk you know mm -hmm. which i think is good you know it it opens your eyes so many of the welsh folklores and stuff there are many different types of versions and stuff um which i like to share with people because um these stories have been passed down for many 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 years um you know, and you, sometimes you hear something new or something different, which I think is really cool, you know. In one of my previous streams, I did I did the play, one of the play versions, which is quite popular at the moment as well. And they sort of modernized a bit how the Lady of the Lake speaks in that and how she speaks of, like, the man she married like she talks about him like later on down the line in such a crude manner like she laughs when he cries and things like that um because everyone in the older myths she's treated as obviously a dainty glass figure she's you know utterly beautiful but you don't particularly hear her thoughts and stuff going through it so i liked how they modernized mm. that play to basically be like, you know, like, he, well, he's not nothing special. Like, he's broken the rules. You know, I, I'm, I suppose, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and take that. You know. That makes sense. Mm. But she's mostly in a lot of the olden scripts. She's treated as like just an object in a sense. Like, you know, like 
And there were plenty of other scenarios, like, in, in the situations that happened that he could have avoided all this stuff. You know, like, smacking yep. her with the gloves. Like, if she was laughing, he could have politely said, hey, can I please talk to you? You know? But he put his hands on her. It might not have been in, like, you know, a vengeful, hurtful way, but it was uncalled for. Like, you know... To her, it was a big deal, makes but, sense. you know, to us, it's not. It's one of those... It's it's not entire. It doesn't entirely make sense mm -hmm. to us, but the, the point of the story is still there. Yeah. And it, it also, like, teaches a message about, obviously, boundaries as well. Yeah. Because, you know, she's essentially... Like, the Lady of the Lake, she was a princess of the Fey Kingdom. So, it's essentially like, you treat her like royalty. Like, you were blessed to be granted to marry her. You know? Because essentially, to the Fey, we are common folk. We are, like, yeah. the lowest creatures. Like, even the smaller ones, like, you know, they have gifts and stuff that we couldn't imagine. You know, they've lived for longer than we can imagine, you know. And yes, I still believe in that because um, we, yep. we have, totally um, you know, because I, I, I live obviously, you know, Wales is very nature based. So you have a lot of trees, like pretty much majority of places you will go to. Like it, it's very green here. Um Green is fun. And we have, like, a bunch of horse chestnuts and stuff as well. I'm not sure if we have a witch practicing in my area because um, <laughs> we found... So, on my on my walks and stuff, we found, literally, horse chestnuts, like... There's a big glade of, like, horse chestnuts. So, like, they'll fall when it's time to fall. We call yeah. them, like, conkers as well. And that makes sense. We... I was walking and... We found literally lined up in a row by the post box um, at, at like the crossroads, mind you. We've got like, you know, two paths and two roads. Um, literally right. a row of conkers literally just lined up at this post box. And we were just like, oh, nice. Interesting. You know. Um, so, you know, that we still have a lot of obviously people who practice their beliefs to their deities and stuff which is really cool i love learning about that stuff um you know and they that stayed up pretty much most of the day that um line and then by the next day it was gone um which i think was really cool discord crashed i'll be right back yeah no worries i'll let you sort yourself out oh drink But yes, many of these Welsh ones, you'll hear different depictations from uh, scholars, um, historians back in the day, um, and a lot from like obviously pastors and things like that. Um, and which which is quite surprising because a lot of people believe, oh, you know, people from the church tend to stay away from them, but. Most of these authors as well are pastors and churchmen, clergymen. So, you know, that there's a little truth to some of the stuff that, that goes on, which I think is really nice. You know? Did Discord fix itself, Lion? Uh, I had to go fix it. You had to fix it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> but, so, the, the moral of this story... Or the way that I would tell the moral of this story. This is why you treat her like a princess. <laughs> yes, that's true. That is true. Fine. Yeah. There, there's, there's lot, there is lots of renditions, but I, I always find out that was like one of the earliest welsh folklore tales that i was ever introduced to was the lady of the lake like that was the first proper one that you know was brought up in school for us like in english and in drama lessons um and things like that mm. 
Like it, I know the Lady of the Lake is a, a common character across several different. Um, yeah, they also in some you know, stories they believe that the Lady of the Lake guards Excalibur as well because mm -hmm. there was a, in one tale there was a tale that Excalibur was thrown into this lake. Um, oh, that would make sense. And another rendition, it's like. Um, who had the person who had Excalibur gave went to the lake, met the lady of the lake after obviously she parted from her husband and stuff, um, and right. basically asked her to be the keeper of the sword because they didn't want it to fall into the wrong hands. So that there's there's a lot like some of the tales coincide very well with each other, like whether during the same time period or later down the line. Which I think is really, really cool. You know. It's not just, obviously, fairy women that get, you know, married or captured or anything. It's it's fairy men as well. Yep. And this one well, is... it's fairies in general, because, you know, magic. Magic, yeah. That is true. Um, I know in some tales, they used to kidnap, like, um pixies and like fairies in like little um lantern thingies uh to provide light for the miners and stuff your voice has been so calming i've been dozing off oh hikari i'm glad you're not the first person to doze off <laughs> you're not the first person besties openly taken naps when i read so that's <laughs> you know i'd rather people you know if i offer you some comfort i'm i'm happy about that i am <laughs> You've got a great voice for it. I've, I've been told by many people. It's it's surprising, you know. Um, obviously, growing up and stuff, um, you know, because bullies will be bullies. Like, I used to get told my voice was annoying um, and to shut up quite often. So I was quite a quiet person uh, most of my life. Um, only talking, really. <laughs> a care package. It's like you know I'm a potato, sir. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Ugh, stretchies. Ugh. I needed that stretch, actually. <laughs> I got my drink. Because I'm good at staying hydrated. <laughs> I can make tea in my new mug when it comes as well. <laughs> it's got a jellyfish on it. Oh, uh, yeah, that. Shit. I remember that. I'm so happy with it. Yes. I'm like, I have to look at my cupboard going, do I have room to put it in there? The amount of mugs I have. <laughs> but I'm like, I saw it and was like, I need this mug. <laughs> it's got a jellyfish on it. Sing Cal on land, Hikari. Okay. <laughs> I will do so for you. Find it. You comfy hickory. <laughs> right. I'll i I'll i sing a bit for you, Hickory. <laughs> I've heard you sing it before. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Hidden <laughs> cough and poet moistus. Ada beat a fair line man. Ovenui from Galon Hapis, Galon all this Galon land, Galon land and land I own me. Eka hue na lily draws, Demon Galon land of Gami, Gami a deeper can ear nose. There you go, sweetie. <laughs> I hope you like that. <laughs> we got to figure out how many verses there are to that. Oh, I know. I'll have to send. I'll, I'll have to send you the entire song at some point. Like, oh, like it's it's a good song. It's a good if you're gonna song. do that, can you do it in song format? Yeah, of course. Of course. I loved it. Knows me. Oh, you're very welcome, sweetie. <laughs> I was like, who am I going to raid later? And I was like, I found someone I'll raid later. 
That's always fun. I always like to check to see who's on, and sometimes I'll have their stream muted yep. so I can rack up their points. <laughs> yeah, I do that a lot too. That's how Bestie was like ho holding all the points and stuff, so sometimes she'd be like little gremlin. Yep. <laughs> you are very welcome, Hikari. I'm happy you enjoyed the song. <laughs> It's it's not too high pitched of a song, which I'm I'm thankful for. I can't hit high notes anymore. <laughs> I'm sure you could with a little um, mm. little practice. I do need to practice for like future voice acting and like idol things coming up in the next couple of years. Eisen, my manager, has plans for me. <laughs> mm. I'm never sure to be like excited or scared or just both when it comes to like when they go, oh yeah, we got plans for you. I'm like. Okay. <laughs> you never know. But all good things, I suppose. I know one of my friends' amateur like movies they've been working on, the Z Apocalypse Fall Days movies coming out like either the end of December uh, toward New Year, and I voice a character in that too. And then he's working on like season two of the, his little series and I voice an, another character in that too. So in total I voice like three characters for his project. It was like my first amateur project I, I help with and it's it's a stepping stone. You, fizzy Pop is so fizzy. <laughs> it's really exciting yeah. and a great thing that's, for sure. Definitely understand the anxiety that comes with it. Honestly like it's like it is a bit of anxiety because like I'm nervous as well about like how people perceive me and like my talent and stuff like I have a lot to gain with my self-confidence issues um you know so it still always shocks me when people subscribe and and like you know cheer me on and stuff like I'm still like am I that good people want to spend money on me <laughs> you know so it's it's a it's a big like hill I have to climb to be honest but it's 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 slow progress of like learning to be like you know they're here they come to support you they like your voice and what you do and like I don't do nothing like too grand but apparently it makes a difference to a lot of people which you know is what I like to do I like to help you know where I can you know you don't do anything too grand, but you do make amazing content. I do. You are a very cute dragon, yeah. and that is enough to deserve it. Thank you. Um, when I used to work retail, um, uh, there was this really nice homeless man that I'd buy, like a McDonald's for a couple times. Um, and he, you know, hadn't been homeless for too long, but like... It was enough to affect him to the point where, you know, he talked to me about Game of Thrones. Like, he was, and, um, you know, a lot of the homeless community would be really nice and stuff. Like, especially if you give them food and shit, they were really nice. And the horrible ones would basically be told off. It's like, no, you don't you don't mess with her. She takes care of us when she can't, when she's able to. <laughs> and during Easter time... Uh, the company would give us all the broken easter eggs and stuff because as a company we couldn't sell them because they were damaged so we'd end up with like a shit ton to go home with and i was like well i don't i've got like a lot at home that i'm not really using so any extras i would always get like i'd always like stop by thank you for the care package circus Ugh. oh god dang it. i just <sighs> And a drink. I just leaned back too. <laughs> it's like they know. <laughs> Told you they know. Chat knows. <laughs> and I used to give the extra like broken ones that I I was wasn't planning to eat because I was like, well, you know, I got like two for myself, and like I still ended up with a load. Um, so I would give them to them, and they were just like really really happy, like. I just used to do little things like that, you know, even buying a coffee here and there for people. Like, I've always put other people before myself, you know, 
so like as my grandmother said like i'm one of the most selfless people she has ever met in her entire life and a lot of the time for me it's just human decency just being nice to people like i don't like being mean to people you know i'm always aware <laughs> i'm here in soul <laughs> I, I do try to at least uh, bring a little joy to people because the, the world's a shitty place. You know, I don't do nothing too grand, but, you know, I'm happy people can, like, cheer up, be happy and stuff, you know? And then I get people that lie and just being like, get loved on here. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh god, how do I, how do I deal with this? Um... Because even, even sometimes, like, if, even sometimes, say, like, if I got, like, flowers just as a spare gift and stuff, I've generally asked people, what did I do to deserve this gift? Even on my birthdays and Christmases, I'm like, you know, it, it's taken a, a lot to just be, pre to, to just sort of say thank you a bit more, even though I say thank you a lot and try not to, like, feel, like, questionable about, like, Oh god, did, what did I do to deserve this and stuff? And not just, like, people want to do nice things and give me stuff because they want to. Like, you know, one of one of my one of my old friends, he's basically like, It's my money. I'm buying you whatever the fuck I want to buy because it's my money. You just say thank you. He said, you deserve it because you're my friend. And he's like, if I want to buy you a gift, I'll buy you a fucking gift. You just like it. I'm <laughs> like okay you know it's it's especially when you've grown up obviously not having a lot of stuff and always being like forgotten and stuff so it's it's very different to like go from like not having anything to getting like more than you're used to and i'm just like what <laughs> i do get a bit like shocked a bit and i'm just like thank you because i don't think thank you is ever like enough to properly convey how thankful i am to everybody but like it's the only like word that ever comes out to to, to the point That's where like to the point where like during it's during my smash and pass stream i cried twice because <laughs> i couldn't process it i'll either go into like very smiling and just like i'll laugh and other times, again, I just stop functioning. Like, um, the time Inge dropped 100 gift subs, I stopped working and just my eyes just started crying because I couldn't function and figure out, like, that's a lot of money somebody has just spent on, on little old me. And I'm like, it baffled me completely. So I'm still getting shocked even when people drop, like, gift subs now, even with Paolo and everybody and, and you. I'm just like, what? Because <laughs> I, I always think people could spend their money on something a lot better. Um, you know, I have low self-esteem. Please sue me. You know, it happens. <laughs> it's it's something I, I do still work on. But, you know, it happens. <laughs> and then there's so many people in the community basically like, get loved on. Just have, you know. And, of course, they're in a financial place where they can support me and stuff and I'm I always like to make sure but like it's still a fight that I have ongoing with myself it's like no no they're here to support you and everything um and things like that you know so you have to remember there may very well be better things for us to spend money on mm -hmm. but we're choosing to spend it on you Yes, but that's that's another one of the things. It's like they're choosing to do that. They could buy seriously anything else. <laughs> it's it's a battle. You you know I'm struggling with my self confidence, bro. <laughs> and it's it's always like a nice surprise though when like I check my emails and I'm like you you bought me a gift or even when I'm on stream and people it just all pops up that people are like cheering or gifting subs or subscribing I'm like oh my god <laughs> I never I never know like like how how to respond because it's like how many times can I say thank you to somebody <laughs> you know. You can say it as many times as you like. We're not going to stop. I know. I fear, though, because Christmas is coming up as well. 
Oh god, I hope I've not told any of y'all my birthday. <laughs> Maybe. Oh god. Yeah. It's one of those I like to make sure everyone's okay, but like I I've got you've got like the holidays coming up, you've got like Christmas, then you've got Valentine's Day, then you've got Mother's Day. I've been loved on on Mother's Day as well by, by some of my friends who like see me as like an adopted mom. They're like, Happy Mother's Day, Nelsa me. <laughs> like, thank you. But like overseas, your Mother's Day is very different to mine. Ours is in like March. It's on your Twitter, by the way. Damn it. <laughs> God damn. Oh, I've been outed. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's it's one of those, like, you've got, like, Christmases, you got Valentine's Day, you got Mother's Day, you got my birthday, and I'm just like, y'all gonna be devils. <laughs> it's just super cute, and it's one of those, like, I've had people just going, Christmas is coming up. Caught in 4K, I know, Hikari. <laughs> <laughs> Hikari's just gonna go around Twitter later going, Nozomi's, Nozomi's birthday's this. Or make sure you send her shit for Christmas. <laughs> that means you gotta go change it now, or it's gonna go everywhere. I don't mind, to be honest. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't mind. But like, you know, just just be prepared. You might break me at some point. Like even when people like just gift me, I'm like, oh, oh goodness. Like Paolo's That's just fine. like rock, rocking it with eleven gifts. I'm like, sir, sir. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you're cute then. I know. I know. But make sure you cover your bills. Like, I always say yes. that. Cover your fucking bills. <laughs> oh, I will definitely have my bills covered when your birthday rolls around. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm gonna be an old dragon. <laughs> You're not old. I mean, character-wise, I am old, but, you know. IRL, I'm, I'm pretty much old. Mm, it depends on what you mean by old. Because if character-wise... You're still within a certain percentage of expected age, then you're definitely not old. Oh, uh, okay. Well, what what age do you classify as an old dragon? Well, that depends. What type of dragon are we talking about? The ones that live for uh, tens of years? Are we talking about the ones that live for hundreds of years, oh, thousands yeah. of years, oh, tens yeah. of thousands very, of years? Very, very, very old dragon. I'm about hmm. I'm about a thousand years right now. Okay. And how long does your kind of dragon tend to live? Uh, a long time. A long, long time. Okay. So yes, you're still young. Thank you. Yes. Working on the law. I don't think people know mine soon, Hikari. Oh no, yours is somewhere in January, I think, Hikari. If I remember. I think. I don't know. Quote me if I'm wrong. I think it's soon. Okay. So, this is about fairy men captured. Nope, not Janwick, damn it. I'll get it out of you, Hikari. I will. <laughs> so, is it in February? March. I'm gonna say March. Am I close? Who's closest? Lions guess February. I've gone March. I need answers now. <laughs> You've you've piqued my interest. Cause I swear I swear she mentioned it at some point. I need to know so I can put it on my Discord birthday list. I think it's a birthday bird roll. <laughs> oh dear. Yes. Close, but no cigar. Ding ding ding. March si yes. Fucking March. Yes. I don't know what date in March. Wait, it's probably like, like 15th, 16th? I'm gonna say like 23rd. Around the 20s, maybe. Oh, God. Birthday guessing. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be so many birthdays I gotta remember. 23rd mm -hmm. is very close. 25th. Is it the 25th? 21st. Oh. Close. Because I know she's somewhere close to my sister. 27th, yeah. Yeah, 27th. You, you're three days before my sister. 
Yeah. All right, write that down. Yes, write that down. I will remember that. March 27th. <laughs> where's, where's my Discord? <laughs> I'm writing it in our DM. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it's 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 there now. Works for me. It's, it's there now. Oh, uh, even better. We're gonna we're gonna pin it. There we go. <laughs> 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 we we now remembered it. I was born. In, I remember you telling me you were born early, honey. Yeah. I definitely now remembered it. No, don't do that. I've done it now. <laughs> it's your card. You have a throne. I don't know if she does. I need to get her to set one up though. And get love done. Well, I know she's working to get affiliate as well. On her on her Twitches. Don't have a throne. I will help you set one up, honey. You I do have th codes if you need them. Yeah, so I, I got I got I'm like sure, about three. I'm sure knows me as well. Yeah, I got like three codes, I think. You don't need one, that's fine, but you should want one. <laughs> but if you have one, I can buy you things. And and plushies. Plushies to carry. And chocolate. I can buy you anything you want. <laughs> Snacks. To an extent. Yes. Indeed. It's always nice to have one. Get loved on. Don't want to be spoiled. Ma'am. You could be spoiled. <laughs> if you're in if you're in my community you get loved on. <laughs> yes. Yes. How do I find my code? I don't know. I uh, I think it's somewhere on your profile, but Yeah, I'm looking for it. So let's go over a little bit more before it's time to wrap up because Nozomi is getting a sleepy dragon. I will help you set one up later, sweetie, yes. Don't be alarmed if I drop. Oh, if, don't be alarmed if I drop um, the link to um, the lion when it's all set up. <laughs> yeah, so I will help you set one up. Uh, probably be tomorrow, but I'll help you set one up because tomorrow is my day off, and so far Capricorn hasn't got back to me on being a stream buddy. It's like if if people want me to hang out with them, it's like, hey, you know, you gotta let me know. Mr. Isaac, don't lick my sock. That is weird. Here. That might work. I don't know if it'll work. It's worth a shot. No, you should whisper it to her because it's not showing up on the thingy. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Yes. You have it set to not allow uh, links. That's fine. Yeah. Here, well, I whispered my, my, it. My, I don't know if it'll work. My mods and stuff have all just like set stuff up. Like, my, uh, like some stuff I have to allow through because my manager went on like a word purge one day and I was like, okay, sir. Like you do know, I, <laughs> you do know I swear. But it, he was on a sort of protect Nozomi fucking mission and just went crazy one day in my stream, just like adding like words to a list, and I'm just like, you know, I'll get round to it. But yes, this is. Fairy men captured. They're coming after Ooh, the dudes. Fun. Sip of my drink. There are many tales current of wee fairy men having been captured. These tales are, however, evidently variants of the same story. The dwarves are generally spoken of as having been caught by a trapper in his net or bag and the hunter, quite unconscious of the fact that a fairy is in his bag, proceeds homewards, supposing that he has captured a badger or some other kind of vermin. But all at once he hears the being in the bag speak, and throwing the bag down, he runs away in a terrible fright. Such, in short, is the tale. I will proceed to give several versions of the story. So this is with Elwern version. The following tale was told by Mr. Evan Roberts, um, Frith Agored, a farmer in the parish of Llanfrog. Roberts heard the story when he was a youth at the parish in Withelun. It is as follows. A man went from his house for peat to the, st to the stack on the hill. As he intended to carry away only a small quantity of for immediate use, 
he took with him a bag to carry it home. When he got to the hill, he saw something running before him, and he gave chase and caught it and bundled it in the bag. He had not proceeded far on his way before he heard a small voice shout somewhere near him, Neddy, Neddy, and then he heard another small voice in the bag saying, There is Daddy calling me. No sooner did the man hear these words than in a terrible fright he threw the bag down and ran home as fast as he could. My leg is now wet. The dog licked my leg. God damn it. Better than licking your toes. Well, he, he tries to do that because I have my fluffy socks on that you bought me. He just licks my socks. Better than licking your toes. Yes, I, I, <laughs> I like to keep my socks on in the house because, you know, cold feet. I get cold feet very easily and like cold hands a lot. So like, yep. you know, so my like, fluffy socks are just super comfy. <laughs> Most of the time, like he'll either jump on my chair and be like, notice me, please. Or if he doesn't, he'll just like lick my foot and walk away. I'm like, why? <laughs> he's a, he's, that would scare me. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so well, used to it. I can, I can see him in my peripheral vision. He comes over and he's like, let me lick your foot. I'm like, please, please. Well, the dog, <laughs> dog sees little sausages and wants to oh, taste them. My little toesies are not sausages. <laughs> I only have small toesies. Oh. I do give him sausages sometimes, so he just gets spoiled. <laughs> Even has his own Christmas stocking. He did, my my mum did buy him a bone though the other day, like a really hard like toy bone, so like, you know, the help of his teeth and stuff, and it won't be broken so easily. And during one of my streams, um, my partner literally was wandering around the house and he was showing me chunks of this bone that he broke. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, he broke the bone? I was like, oh That's no. That's not too hard to do, especially if it's a, a, a bird. Yeah. It, bird bones are very fragile. It was one of those, it was an actual dog toy bone as well. Like, so it was like, you know, hard, like, mm. rubber material that he couldn't, like, Interesting. easily break. It was a similar material than one of the toys he has at home, but he still managed to, like, break it. Yeah, I was like, sir. He, I mean, he did destroy the Christmas rug that we got. Literally, we, have, <laughs> we had a rug. And it's like a small, like, it looks like the size of a doormat. And it always goes on the front of the fire, um, on the floor. And he broke it. And I was like, he just chewed it up. And I was like, oh, dude. Like, he'd left it alone, like, the year before. But, like, this year, he's like, no, I'm going to chew it. <laughs> Wait, so That's understandable. He's a menace. He's a menace to society. <laughs> He's looking at me. <laughs> dogs do that sometimes. I see you, Mr. Dooge. <laughs> He's looking at me from across the room. But he, he, he likes to... He's like a big baby, though. He's only like two years old. And he likes to be all centre of attention. So some sometimes if I'm in a VC or streaming, he's like, he'll bork. <laughs> and he'll be like, who are you talking to? <laughs> it's like, I'm not allowed friends. <laughs> Yeah. He's a big softy though, Hikari. He's a good doggo. It would scare me. Oh, uh, he's he's not scary. He's Large just... dogs are typically pretty. Yeah, he's a short head sheep Pencil. dog. <laughs> but anytime you you're making food or if you have like peanut butter or anything, he'll just sit by you and like watch you make a sandwich. <laughs> if you've got ham, he's like, "Hello, can I have I mean... some?" If you think about it, even herding dogs, their their job is to herd sheep, but they don't want to hurt the sheep. They just want to move them. Yeah, pretty good. Like he's a, he's a good dog. We we got him a, a bubble gun for Christmas because he likes bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's the best investment we've ever bought because <laughs> he's a good doggo. Yeah, so that would be good. So we've got the Flandrichlo version of uh, the little fairy men. Like, oh I'm in, I'm indebted for the following tale to Mr. E. S. Roberts, schoolmaster in Flantasilio, near Flangothlin. <laughs> Flantasilio. Just a second. It's okay. 
of two men whilst otter hunting in Gwyn Penan in Llandrichlo saw something reddish scampering away across the ground just before them. They thought it was an otter and watching it saw that it entered a hole by the side of the river. When they reached the place they found underneath the roots a tree, two burrows. They immediately set work to catch their prey. Whilst one of the men pushed a long pole into one of the burrows, the other held the mouth of a sack at the other, and very shortly into the sack rushed their prey and it was secured. The men now went homewards, but they had not gone far. Here they heard a voice in the bag saying, My mother is calling me, and then frightened the they threw the sack to the ground, and saw a small man, clothed in red, emerge therefrom, and the wee creature ran away with all his might to the brushwood that grew along the banks of the river. Who kidnapped the tiny men? You'll have to throw me. <laughs> oh god, this one's got a, a big Welsh pat piece that I need to speak. Okay. And this is the Snowden version. The following tale is taken from Yagorodovigion, page 98. It does have an English translation, so you'll, you'll hear that in a minute. I've had a sip of my drink. I'm ready. <laughs> The eighth trigillion Adeloid Kilk Kilkinal e Withva Untro e Hela Priv Hlud Methesen e Kal Galwig Aran e Iterod Kadav Aunt Kilkwinasan Am un Erbin Tranoi Pri Osod Sak Ai Hig in Agarod a dwych i'r arferiau i prif vinyad iddo, ond ni byddai byth i'n difod allan rhif ddo am i fod un rhys serth ar Sithrig. A modd a gosod asant i sat oedd roddi cortyn tri dichlau yn ei creig yn y ffeith fodd ag i trychau ac i ceu i ceg pan i lai rhywbeth iddi felly fyw eith pawb i fan ac i weli i noson honno i dar war o drannau awd i edrych i sach ac erbyn difod at i oed i ceg wedi crichoi yn arwydd fod rhywbeth o ddyfewn Codwyd i a thaflodd yn hei a i ysgyd i'r dwy'n adref, ond pan ei agos i bryn i feddw gweli dorpyn a dynan bychan yn sefyll a delphin o greig gerllaw ac yn gweddi. Mae'r agwyti yna dwad y dwyf a thebu pleith deithir on dicrynig dig o'r sach a'r hyn weddi'r hylyw i'r dechrau rhedig maeth a da oedd gan ddith gwneud hynny i gadael y sach i'r prif gan dibyd i bod wedi dal yn y sach yn ei ystyrbydion i pwll i wyleidod o'n dellasant ar ôl hynnau mae yn o'r solwydd teg oedd y sach. The tale in English reads this. Once the people who lived in the neighbourhood of Snowdon went badger hunting. They failed the first day to get sight of one, but they laid a trap for one by the next day. This they did by placing a sack open mouth with a noose through it at an entrance to the badger's den. The vermin was in the habit of entering his abode by one passage and leaving it by another. The one by which he entered was too precipitous and slippery to be used as an exit, and the trappers placed the sack in this hole, well knowing that the running noose in the mouth of the sack would close if anything entered. The next morning the hunters returned to the snare and at once observed that the mouth of the sack was tightly drawn up, a sign that there was something in it. The bag was taken up and thrown over the shoulder, 
by one of the men to be carried home. But they went, when they were near Brynna Fedu, they saw a lump they saw a lump of a little fellow standing on top of a rock close by and shouting, Mireille, are you there, say? I am, was the answer in the strange but nervous voice. Upon this, the hunters, throwing down the bag, began to run away, and they were glad to do so, although they had to leave their sack behind them, believing us, as they did, that they had captured one of the spirits in the bottomless pit. But afterwards, they understood that this was one of the fairy tribes that was in the sack. There was at a time a tale much like the current in the parish of Nephiliog near Rithin, but in the latter case the voice in the bag said my father is calling me, though no one was heard to do so. The bag however was cast away and the trapper reported that he had captured a fairy. Yes I might. Because I'm height. Oh, Is I know. <laughs> And then you've got the Clan Via Different uh, Fluid Version. So Mr. Evan Davis, the carpenter, Bryn Clan Avenichid, told the writer that Robert Jones, innkeeper in the same parish, told him the following tale, mentioning at the same time the man who figures in the narrative, whose name, however, I have forgotten. The story runs thus. A man wishing to catch a fox laid a bag with a mouth open but well secured, at the entrance to a fox's den in Coid Cochian, Clan Vair Differing Cluid, Parish, and hid himself to await the result. He had seen the fox enter its lair, and he calculated that it would ear long emerge therefrom. By and by, he observed that something had entered the bag, and going up to it, he immediately secured its mouth, and throwing the bag over his shoulder, proceeded homewards. But he had not gone far on his way before he heard someone say, Where is my son, John? The man, however, thought it was dark, was not frightened, for the thought that possibly someone was in search of a lad who had wandered from home. He was rather troubled to find that the question was repeated time and again by someone who apparently was following him. But what was his terror was, ere long, he heard a small voice issue from the bag he was carrying, saying, There is dear father calling me. The man in terrible fright threw the bag down and ran away as fast as his feet could carry him and never stopped until he reached home. And when he came to himself, he related the story of his adventure in the woods to his wife. Awesome. I will continue the tales on my next stream where we cover fairy money turned to dross. Probably be, on, be probably be on Monday because tomorrow is my day off. Cause days I, off are good. Yes, I need days off. Yep. Need you to, gotta rest. It got to rest, and I can look through more stuff for my stream, like my decorations and stuff. Of course, you carry. You're always more than welcome to come join me. On the if pillow princess needs her beauty sleep. <laughs> I do like my sleep. Yes. <laughs> Never wake a sleeping dragon, as they say. Because, you know, that, that can end just badly for people, you know. I did have a nap earlier today because of... Unless it's to give her food. Yes, I like food. <laughs> I do I do like food. If, especially if it's, like, nice food. I make food. I like food. <laughs> I'm still at least learning to have breakfast every day because, you know, you keep yes. reminding me. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes. I, did, I didn't have too much to eat today, but I did eat. I did make poached eggs for lunch, though, which was nice. That sounds nice. Yeah. I haven't had poached eggs in a while. Like, I still suck at making them, but I still try my hardest to make them. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they still tasted good, and the yolk was all runny. You know how I like them. That's how you do it, yeah. Yeah, on a, and I put it on the, the toast and stuff. We had like thick yep. toast, so thick bread was nice. That's the way to do it. Mm. I'm not sure what I want for breakfast tomorrow though, because like, we don't have much bread in. I might have some pancakes, I don't know yet. You know, I might have a few biscuits with a cup of tea, I don't know yet. Get more bread. <laughs> Gonna make sure I have all the bread. 
I like, I like, I like toast lately. Toast is one of my favourite things to eat. Like with some like cheese spread on it. But no, I can't, I can't, I can't eat like candy for breakfast though, because that's not healthy. Of course, Ikari. You're always welcome to come enjoy my streams. I hope you feel better, sweetheart. And get plenty of rest. Yeah, don't worry. We're going to be raiding out in a <coughs> moment to CL. Because I have not raided this lovely gentleman before. <laughs> and I could rest as well. And I want everyone to, like... Bye as well to Lion, and I want to thank him for joining us today. Of course. Yes, I enjoy. I enjoy having always, you. Move to this street. Always an honor to hang out with my favorite dragon. Ah, thank you. So we are gonna go raid CL today. Um, be sure to give him lots and lots of love. Um, from Nozomi. <laughs> Um, but it is goodbye from me and goodbye from Lion. I'll be streaming again on Monday, guys. Um, so you'll catch me around, like, Discord and Twitter and all mm. fun things like that. So I will see you guys soon. And it's bye from me and bye from Mr. Lion. Thank you, thank you for stopping by. Say bye, mm -hmm. Lion. Say I'm really bad with those Say kinds bye of things. Bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs>